is the Glass Cannon Network. There's a uh, very popular country song out right now uh, by uh, an artist named Hardy featuring Lainey Wilson called uh, Wait in the Truck. And uh, I'd heard this song a few <laughs> times before I, I was just like, oh, catchy tune. And then my wife was like, have you heard this new song, Wait in the Truck? And uh, I'm like, yeah, uh, well, how, sing it. And she sang it. And I was like, yeah, I know. I think I know that one. She's like, well, next time, really listen to it. And so I brought it up on YouTube and listened to it. And uh, it's one of these uh, classic old country story songs where this uh, basically this, like transient country drifter is driving around and he sees a, uh, uh, it's going to be a little dark, he sees a woman <laughs> on the side of the road who's like covered in bruises and battered. And so he he picks her up and he's like, what uh, what happened to you? And she's like, oh, my my boyfriend or my husband, he, you know, he, uh, she talks about the whiskey scars she's hiding. And uh, so he's like, well, where, uh, where is this guy? And so she's, she tells him where it is. And so he drives over there and he says, wait in the truck. And he goes in and he kills the guy. And then he sits on the porch and waits for the cops to come. And the cops come and he gives himself up and he goes away for life. And then she comes and visits him, and uh, and he's like just happy uh, that she comes and visits him. But he's he's in jail for life, uh, so it makes me wonder: what's the nicest thing you ever did for a stranger? <laughs> <laughs> Jared. <laughs> well, when I was a transient for a while, I found a battered woman, and she was so happy to see a transient after being horribly beaten that she immediately let me take her in my arms. Really primed uh, to get into a stranger's truck. Yeah, she was really happy to get into my truck. Uh, she was totally at, at ease doing that, and I took her for a Jamba Juice. <laughs> Uh, Skid, have you done anything nice for a stranger ever in your life? Like real nice? Think, no, I don't think so. No. <laughs> <laughs> Never carried an air conditioning up four flights of stairs for an old lady? I can't. No. No. no I, I can't recall. I, I probably did, but <laughs> it, it, it didn't register. Matthew, I imagine you have so many things that you've done uh, for the strangers uh, that you've met over your uh, short 23 years on this earth. Um, God, I wish. Um, well, there is one story I could tell where I encountered somebody that I had never met on the streets of New York, and they were like, hey, I need a favor, and I can't pay you anything, but if you could do me this, fa this solid, you know, it'll be your good deed for the day. And I said, okay. And then they wanted me to come back and skin all of their serial killer victims alive with them. Cause you know, you need someone to hold them down. Wow. Um, and I said, sure. That's not <laughs> nice though. That's not a nice <laughs> thing. I know what you're doing. That's best. a favor, but it's not. <laughs> you Jared sort on. of set the bit tone. Jared set the bit tone. Come on guys, true. be real like I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, say a real thing like Jared did. I mean, Sydney, nobody, you... nobody composed a murder ballad about me. <laughs> Sydney, you a big stranger helper? Yes. Um, End of my, story. My boyfriend likes to think that I'm too trusting, which to me is very funny uh, because I think I'm extremely skeptical. I think I'm like anti-authoritarian, like no, like full skepticism about everybody. But I do think that generally I am like a nice person who thinks good of most people. Um, New York hasn't broken me down yet. Uh, <laughs> oh, it will. But I do one thing that I think is good. I don't know. Um, when I work on set, we always have so much crafty leftover and lunch leftover and they always ask the crews if you know do you guys want to take some home and usually people are like no because i don't want to carry this big tray of like chicken cuban chicken home on the subway <laughs> so i take it uh oh anytime that i can and then i just give it to any homeless person or houseless person that i see who's <laughs> asking for money or food and i give them like a full tray of food or whatever i have and that's it i just try to do that that's every a, time i leave set that is a money bit Sid. that's awesome yeah. It's a, it's That's a hilarious. bit. Yeah. It's hilarious. Funniest bit so far. Funniest bit yeah. so far. Sometimes the truth is the funniest thing. 
<laughs> my <laughs> comedy chops have been put to shame. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Was Troy asking if we were good people? I'm supposed to go and fart all over it. Yep. That would have been more appropriate. Oh, okay, yeah. The nicest thing I did was I, I tripped an old lady in Times Square. I told her to eat shit and die. Um, Every single thing I've done in the entire course of my life has been meaner than that. <laughs> That was the nicest thing I've ever done. Are you just bringing like trays of buffalo wings to people on the street? Yes. Without napkins? <laughs> it's like the muffin bottoms all over it's, again. Yeah. If like I a- saw you with a tray of buffalo wings, I would really quickly try to make myself look unhoused. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it's not like very conducive, like eating food. Like it's a big tray of rice. And it's like, yeah. well, they will, I mean, rice is fine. It's good. But I'm like, this is what I had. I yeah. don't know. It's rice. Here, here you are, stranger. Help yourself to <laughs> yeah, fistfuls of rice. Here's some very dry old rice. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, you don't even give know, that, you're not even supposed to give that to pigeons at weddings. You no, know, all right. No good deed. <laughs> Fuck it goes unpunished. She's never done anything good. They're moving on. <laughs> never done. Finally, we came to the heart of the matter. Joe, I don't know. I feel like uh, you're afraid of strangers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I am I am generally afraid of strangers, yeah. I don't I don't really do much uh nice for strangers, I don't think, besides donating money. But I uh I did <laughs> so a few weeks ago I was walking in my neighborhood. This is random, and I this woman, this older woman was on the side of the road pulled over on the side of the road on my street, and she was like, Could you could you please help me get this? Uh, furniture into my car and it was like somebody was throwing out furniture and it wasn't bad furniture it was like totally furniture you could pick up off the street but they were they were throwing it out and it was like a, like a kitchen table kind of thing and four chairs basically and this woman had this small white sedan and she was like I'd, I'd really love to get this in my car like could you help me like will it fit do you think and I was like oh, sure I'll help you and long story short, I was there for about 30 minutes and I left her with all the stuff still on the street. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, try it this way. Move this around. Well, the trunk could do one chair. Like, and we couldn't get anything into that car. Wow. It was like a full dining set and she had a sedan and it just did not work. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry. I. I have to go. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you made it worse than when it started. I did. Like, ah. I scratched her car like three All times. times. <laughs> cursing, <laughs> cursing and grunting up a storm. Exactly. <laughs> Sweating. S- <laughs> flop sweat. <laughs> She's uh, like she's like slowly edging away. By the end of it, she's across the street because she's just right. so terrified. <laughs> um, well, uh, between now and the next time we all meet, see if you can do one nice thing for a stranger. What have you done, Troy? I am actually nicer to strangers than I am that I like people that I know and like. Um, <laughs> do you consider leaving them alone and running in terror from any interaction with them to be nicer? <laughs> no, I, you know, sometimes my wife is like, you really went out of your way for that uh, stranger. I'm like, eh, I never have to see him again. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I can't remember anything specific, um, but uh, I'm sure I've done something nice. Not the list is so long that it's hard to pick one. I held the door for a, a woman earlier today. She uh, had a baby in her hands, and I said, I got gotcha. you. Wow. Wow. Troy LaValle. Slow clap. You know, people throw around the word humanitarian a little too yeah. frequently these days. Yeah, yeah they do. <laughs> uh, Nobel Peace Prize. I <laughs> oh, oh. What did he do? He held the <laughs> door open uh, begrudgingly. Or a woman holding a baby, uh, and gave her a nasty look. Her, uh, sure, I'll and then it. and then thought to himself, "Well, I never have to see her again." <laughs> did I not mention that I sighed as I did it? Uh, it's still <laughs> held up. Sigh. <laughs> um, we are uh, we're back tonight uh, for some more strange ons. Uh, sorry, we we missed everybody last week. We had this crew ready to go. Luckily, this crew is back. We were like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's put everybody on. Uh, let's put. <laughs> everybody on uh i had started a rumor that uh sydney had quit the show and not a rumor was surprised how many people believed it not a rumor <laughs> i just want to clear the air not a rumor oh you did quit okay and you just uh, came yes, back a- yes and <laughs> oh nice okay 
Well, welcome back. Uh, no, I, did, I didn't quit. <laughs> people were very concerned. You're right, Troy. People were they like are. tagging me on Twitter and they're like, Sydney, please don't quit. Like, please yeah. don't listen to Troy. No matter what he says, like, please don't quit. Uh, and I felt really bad because I didn't quit. <laughs> no. I just couldn't do yeah. the app. Just, just please, please don't quit. Please go back and work with that man who's inspired <laughs> to do good deeds by listening to murder ballads in his car. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start other rumors. Like Ooh. Matthew and I are beefing over student loans. Uh, <laughs> policy. Yeah. I don't think they should be paid by Biden and Matthew does and we've exchanged harsh words. <laughs> the words were so harsh. I yeah. don't know that I can ever look Jared in the eyes again. Yeah. I said if you freeloaders want my generation to pay pay for your mess, you've got another thing coming. <laughs> And that's when the fist started flying. That's well, nice. I really wish you guys hadn't continued that argument over our group email thread. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I got very uncomfortable for me. It, yeah, I'm sorry about that. It just finds a way of just filtering into every every interaction Jared and I have now. Yeah, yeah especially because I start emails with it. <laughs> that's right. That's the subject line. Yeah. You should have seen us go at it. It was like two hockey players where we didn't actually hit each other once, but it was very violent. It was a lot of grappling. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, make a Reddit thread about that because it really is real. <laughs> <laughs> um, my my goal for tonight is to not accomplish anything because that will be easy uh, with five of us trying to role play. Uh, but we have to go back. To two shows ago, or whatever, three sh two shows ago, I think, in Boston, uh, if you're not caught up, uh, earmuffs, but uh, Matthew and Sydney's character passed away, as it were. Uh, Sydney's character, I think it was your second or third ep with that character, and yeah. <laughs> bit it. And so then how did, last time- us, How did they die, Troy? They died uh, to poor dice rolls versus my good dice rolls. <laughs> you killed them. This one I, like, I, well, you, you killed them. Nice kind of wait in the work. truck. Yeah, wait in the truck, <laughs> yeah. Matthew. There's gonna be some guy in a pickup truck waiting outside your apartment. I don't know if he's an angel, cause angels don't do what he did. It's a line from the song. Um, what are we talking oh, about? God. <laughs> wait in the truck. Uh, fucking. So they died, and then uh, last, the last time we went live here, uh, Sydney, you had a. a Prearranged engagement that was more important than us, and so we had Jared come in, and so we're like, "Well, you can introduce your character later." Later, yeah. being they needed today. feminine energy, right? So we needed strong me. feminine energy, <laughs> so we brought Jared back, and uh, then we're just like, we can't just not have Jared be on this app because you're in the middle of something big. So uh, this is going to be uh, this is going to be a real fun app. Joe had asked before we went live, does he even need dice today? Uh, probably not. Let's just <laughs> let's be honest. Let's just see what happens. I do need to do a recap though because it's been a couple of weeks. I barely remember where we are, so I can't imagine any of you do. Um, but you know you're on a boat journey and you're going down the Selen River. You're traveling from the city of Thrushmore in Ustalab all the way down to a whole different nation, the nation of Taldor, uh, to the city of Casimir. Uh, you're going all the way down there because you're hot on the trail of uh, a man named Count Hazard and Lyles IV. We've heard his name now. Ad nauseum. Um, as you've been hot on his trail, you've been taking these... Uh, excursions to the dimensions of dreams, the dimension of dreams, this area uh, known as the dreamlands. And you're doing that because you learned that the Count was doing that in order to further his research. And his research led him, as far as you know, to Casimir. Um, a breakthrough in said research happened um, when the Count met a figure known as the Mad Poet while traveling the dreamland. So you are trying to get a meeting with the Mad Poet as well. But in order to do so, you're going on these various dream quests to random locations throughout the dreamlands to try and obtain specific gifts to offer this Mad Poet, um, to even have the opportunity to speak with him. Uh, right now you have three of the possible seven gifts uh, that it looks like uh, Lowell's brought to him to gain an audience. Meanwhile, though, back in the material plane, back in the real world, uh, life on the boat has been rough. Uh, you were attacked by a group of Razmiran zealots uh, and, and have taken the dozen or so thralls that they had on board on your ship. Um, while stopping in a, another town of religious weirdos, uh, two of your companions, as I just said, were slayed uh, by a creature known as a Dracolisk uh, that seemed hell-bent on destroying you. 
and uh, almost did wipe out the entire party. Um, you then left that seaside town of Riverton behind and watched from afar as the spiritual leader of this town, a, a, an old elf named Nyrel Twiceborn. Uh, he, he's a Hansper worshiper, and you saw him uh, draw one of his wives towards the water as she was kind of coming with him reluctantly, and it appeared as if he drowned her in the water and killed her as part of their fanatical uh, religious worship ceremony that happens at dusk every day. You're, you're, you're like fighting with yourself. We need to go back and kill him. But Skywin's like, that's their problem. We got to move on. Enough people have died. Let's go. And so the next uh, place you stop is a sleepy little town uh, called Debril in the nation of Galt. Uh, and you're stopping there so your captain can resupply. You're going through supplies really quick now that you've got 50 people on board. And, uh, you know, you're also hoping that maybe you can find uh, some more help for your journey as your numbers have dwindled. You lost a very strong sword in Sir Julie and a uh, not great cleric. Um, <laughs> so you're like, I really maybe like Ave. Maybe we can find uh, a warm body and another strong sword. So, <laughs> so <mean. laughs> as your uh, as, as Skywin takes off, you uh, you're introduced to what appears to be a simple commoner who is whittling dollhouse furniture on the docks. Uh, a man by the name of Ethel Merman, uh, who displays incredible martial prowess by beating up O.J. Simpson. Um, <laughs> One of the former slaves of the Resmir and Faith Barge. Um, but as you're waiting for Skywind to return, a, a, a small boat, much smaller uh, than your boat, arrives with three people on it. It's like two men and a figure clad all in gray. Their faces is covered in a shroud with just like a scowling face drawn on it. You start digging through your Rolodex of society checks and you realize, fuck, this is a gray gardener. They are like the police force of Galt, but they're like the KGB. They are the, 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 these inquisitors who act as judge, jury, and executioner for the closest thing to a ruling body in Galt known as the Revolutionary Council. This is a nation embroiled in anarchy. And you thought, uh, even Skywin said, being this far away from the, the main action in Galt, you would be fine in this little town of perfumes and flowers. But... Now there's this great gardener. You watch as they enact this like 10 minute spell and you are able to figure out that the spell that they're casting is discern lies. When they finish casting the spell, they start eyeing the dock and their eyes lock on your boat. They be it, then begin to walk toward you. What's everybody doing at this point? You're all on deck. Are you just kind of chilling? Does everyone notice this? Or is it just like Aldo and Atticus? Because you were the ones being like, what spell is being cast? Ethel, you're still like bringing your whittling stuff up. What, what is happening here? I'd like to say that we're all watching and we're all prepared and we're all ready because it was a 10 minute casting and, and Aldo and, and Atticus both were like, they're casting discern lies. And then when they start walking over, it's like, prepare yourselves. Lies will not get you anywhere, you know? Um, and I think that we're all just like, act natural. Ethel and will turn to weird. Aldo and Atticus and be like, so uh, you, uh, you, you, should I kill him? You want do to kill him? You, do you know this one? No. Have you seen it, him before? I, I don't know him, but uh, you're the, you, you tell me. I'll kill him if you want me to kill him. No, don't. Don't start a scene yet. Uh, I'll give you the signal if it's time for murder. Okay. Yeah. I, you're, you're the boss. Be prepared to kill him, but don't just don't jump the gun. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. But what's the signal? Just so we're clear. Uh, we'll. I'll shout. I'll shriek in a very high-pitched voice. Kill him. Okay. Got it. And that should be pretty. That's, that, that should that be should able be. to discern your uh, your code there, yeah. sir. Hopefully, you remember. Xantar never lies. <laughs> oh, Xantar, I forgot you were here. Xantar <laughs> only tells truths. He is not afraid of these men wearing loincloths on their faces. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is right, Xantar. You need not fear them. Just tell the truth and you'll be fine. 
Yes, I will tell them about our forays into the dreamlands. No. And no, how no, we are no, collecting no. ingredients to <laughs> commune with a dark no, god. Please. No, sir. Don't You're commuting with a dark god? <laughs> that no, wasn't in no. the contract. No, it's a bit it's misunderstanding. Starting. We are commuting Perhaps. with a dark god for good, my friend. Your grace. Uh, uh, it's sometimes the best policy when meeting strangers as your royal personage would surely know is to be quiet first and then then uh, start telling truths in a royal yes. fashion. Just be as silent as possible. They're coming. Um, I'll climb up to the highest point on the ship and kind of perch there and look down below. All right, so this burly... Uh... Heavily tattooed uh, barbarian in a diaper. Dwarf. Uh, dwarf uh, climbs to the top of the crow's nest and looks down as this uh, figure approaches the boat. And uh, standing on the docks below, uh, they look up, and the voice that comes out is that of a woman. Mm. And uh, she says, Who is the captain of this boat? Again. No face, just a drawn-on face. In fact, if I, you go over to roll 20, I will show you what Ooh. she Oh, I bet like. this art's going to be awesome. Oh. Yep. You Confirmed. 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 Looks like Moon Knight. Yeah, there's oh, a little yeah, bit of a totally. Moon Knight situation going on there. Uh, yeah. Longbow on her back. Uh, does she have a sword but, drawn right now? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> looks like she does. Uh, yeah, no, they, I never can get the artwork and like the way they're just walking down the boat. Um, <laughs> it's more of an action shot of her. But uh, <laughs> who is the captain of this boat? I point frantically at Skywind, really. She's gone. She's, yeah, so. She uh, took it is captained by Skywind Freeling. She has gone ashore to collect supplies. We are left behind uh, doing our simple duties. When will she return? I cannot be certain, but today, a matter of hours, I presume. Well, then who is the acting captain in her absence? Aldo, Casimir, uh, he is here. Uh, I don't think we ever settled on a chain of command, chain of succession uh, as such. But uh, certainly I'd be happy to help with any inquiries you might have. We were tasked to look to look after the ship. Is there something wrong? Is there some danger? Perhaps. I am looking for a man named Emilio Daldemain, Senator Daldemain, as it that's were. That's a made-up name. That's there's no way that's like a proper <laughs> name. Emilio Daldemain. Come on. She just Go stares on. at you. Oh shit. Aldo, perhaps. Please not carry on. Perhaps carry it's on. not the time. Is I Senator mean, all names are made up if you think. Is Senator Daldemain? <laughs> is he aboard your ship? Uh, to our knowledge, no. No. I've never no. heard that name in my life. Oh, we'll remember that. No. We Bobby. once did have a Carlos Danger aboard, but... We did, we did. That was... <laughs> he was but a mere congressman. Right, yeah. Carlos Danger. <laughs> oh, wait, no, that's when he went by Carlos Danger, but I believe, I believe Danger was his middle name. Ah, uh, yes. Sorry. I can't I, remember his uh, surname. I forget. She's just watching each of you as you speak, turning and staring at you, perhaps discerning your lies. That was a joke, by the way. I was joking. If it well, wasn't We hired him. That's why, that's why we pay him the big coins, sort of his sense of humor. So you're I'm unfamiliar sorry. with this man? No, never heard of the name. Sorry. Never heard the name, and I have been on this vessel for what, Aldo? Did we board some 40, 50 days ago? Long time. And we have been on this vessel for quite some time, and know that a man of that name has never crossed the gangplank. Can I roll a society check to, to see if Ethel knows the senator? Sure. I don't, like, I don't know if Ethel knows. Yeah, is this like a famous name? Uh, yeah, you can roll society. I'm going to roll it, too. I it's a good idea, roll. Matthew. You know it's what? A Bottle cap. You know, what's funny is you already said you don't know him, so if you succeed on this check and learn something... You're you know, lying. I, I, <laughs> oh, no. Wow, and I rolled a, a 17. 17. <laughs> of course I did uh, on this one. What is it? Ethel, <laughs> Ethel made no claim, uh, but I rolled a 25. 25. Oh. Anybody else? Uh, I rolled a 30. 30. Society. I rolled a 16. Okay. 
Uh, Ethel and Atticus, you seem to remember uh, an undistinguished senator of that name uh, from Isarn. Is that the, uh, the guy from Isarn? I vaguely remember. Oh. Oh, perhaps you're right. Yes. yes. Isarn, by the way, is the capital city of Galt. Oh. Um, and no, I have heard that name. He's a rather high-profile individual. Certainly I would have recognized him if he was on Arbert, but I have not seen him. Well, I, I, should, I, I shouldn't before. say that. I've never seen him before. I just know the name. Well, he is a traitor to the Revolutionary Council, and I have been tasked with finding him. She starts walking towards your gangplank. I must come aboard to search your vessel. I trust that is not a problem. Hand goes to her sword. Of course not. No, of course no. not. That's the moment steps up. Yeah. Perhaps one of you might be willing to read off the manifest so that uh, the honorable gardener here might know who's aboard. Does anyone... You have a list of names of your passengers? That won't I be presume. necessary. I will be thorough and quick. Step yeah, aside, I have please. a feeling that this, like, professor or whatever might be this dude, like, traveling in disguise. I um, think. In which case, we're probably going to get in a fight, but I don't really care about this dude. Is there a reason we care about this dude? Sir Julie cared about that dude. Yeah, because they were banging, <laughs> but Sir Julie's gone. No. Um, I, I, my prediction is that the truth will end up being this guy. If we're take if we're making bets, <laughs> oh, one of the thralls, the truth. Yeah, I think it's oh, oh, oh the there. truth. I was like, <laughs> we of no. course, have the Edge Lord Finger Lakes Wedgie Two, Wedgie One, Wet Knees, <sighs> Fingers O'Toole, <laughs> Fanny Creminger, Dinky Fuss Tumble, uh, Gossin and Rebin, Chocolate Chip, <laughs> Chocolate uh, Dead Chip. Tooth, O.J. Simpson, who's nursing a terrible wound, Pancake, Pork Chop, Pedro Alakabam, Spinny Pow, The Truth, Simple Syrup, Dimples. Mrs. Fantastic, Scallywag, and Basement Betty. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what the manifest says at this point. <laughs> Reading it off like that's solemnly. all I wanted. That's all. I, that's all I wanted you to do. <laughs> and Basement Betty. Well, any of these names could be a cover. Uh, please step aside. Uh, and she comes aboard, and she is just like she's walking around from time to time. She'll like hold her hand out over a section of the boat without even like lifting a. Uh, a tarp or anything to look under it uh, and then she'll walk around and she opens up the captain's uh, chamber goes in there goes in the room where Rebin and Gossa are, comes out and then goes down into the hold of the ship and she's down there for a little while because there's all those people down there and then she comes up very well thank you for your time. Should you see this senator, make it known to any great gardener you should see. This man belongs to me. Do you, you have a card a, or something? Do like you have a, a like card? I don't. <laughs> what does the senator look like? I'm not familiar with his appearance. He's portly and a fool. Oh. Right. He's dressed like a fool. Not like many of those. Like a motley. He's dressed like a motley fool. Motley fool. A fat motley fool. Good. Yes, you will know. She's just kind of hanging there, lingering, watching. You want a you want a cup of coffee or something? Mm. We're low on supplies, but for a great gardener, we'll make an exception. You know, Ethel, please. Stop talking. Let the gardener go on about the, her business. You're the boss. I take it you are new here to this region, sir. Here in Galt, the Grey Gardeners are the only true justice keeping this nation alive. Good day to you all. She turns and starts walking down the dock. And as she's walking down the dock, you see her pass this woman who's just standing there. In fact, you were probably so wrapped up talking to the Grey Gardener that you didn't even notice this woman who's standing there and kind of standing out from the crowd. I mean, as I mentioned last episode, there's a lot of hustle and bustle on the dock. There's people whittling doll furniture. There's, uh, you know, it's not a big fishing town. It's more of a uh, artsy, 
perfumery towns, the people selling their wares and whatnot, but there's a lot happening. But there's this one uh, figure that sort of stands out to you. Um, what do they look like, Sydney? <laughs> she uh, has long brown hair that is sort of like braided and twisted that falls behind her. Uh, she's in a, a long white robe dress and it is sopping wet, just like sticking to her skin, just wet. And <laughs> so it's making a face. And <laughs> it looks good. It's cool. And <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. It's really awesome. She has very prominent, strong features, elven features, high cheekbones, um, really sharp, like eyebrows. An elf uh, bitch. If you look, if you could see closer, green eyes. Um, and if you look even closer, you might notice she is barefoot, no shoes. Oh. And she's standing, almost waiting. Like she's looking at you guys on the boat and she just so, looks very, very patiently waiting. She's just kind of staring ahead. So she looks like a nightmare. Like a nightmare <laughs> is happening with all yeah. of us right now. It's like a like the villain, the monster from a Japanese horror movie. Right? I was going to say, like, <laughs> is she the girl from The Ring? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Okay, forgot to mention. Barefoot, soaking wet, white dress, <laughs> green eyes, staring. Yeah. And she vomits a black out of her mouth as she wears. <laughs> <laughs> and, she and if, vomits a blue black encore. If you could hear of her dress, if you could hear over the dull of fishmongers and stuff, you just hear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but she just stands there waiting, and she looks kind of like, like stoic, peaceful, not creepy, but a little creepy because she's just kind of like. And the creep, the creepiest thing is, I was going to say, Xantar, you don't. You don't quite recognize her. Uh, Ethel, uh, you've been there for uh, a while. You don't recognize her either. But Atticus and Aldo, there's something very hauntingly familiar about this woman. Hey, uh, you know the, you, I, you guys know the creepy chick who's standing on the dock over there? You want me to kill her? Uh, <laughs> From the no, crow's no, no. nest, I yell, Friends! There is a woman staring at the boat! <laughs> <laughs> Zanta has spotted something. Yeah. And we look hey. over... Over the gunnel, as Gunnel. Matthew would say. Gunnel. Um. Ho there. Do you have some interest in this vessel? She looks up, hearing Xantar yell, and then Atticus call out, and she slowly walks towards you, towards the boat. Step, step, wet feet on the dock. Step. I got a bomb ready. <laughs> so what, I, what was I the word down. on the on the killing? Was that a was that a go? Uh, was that a, well, uh, just hold, please. Get your magical invisible weapons ready. We may need them in a moment. <laughs> Excuse uh, me. Please approach slowly. As you know, this is a very dangerous country. We cannot allow anyone aboard. What is your business? Hello. Pardon the intrusion. And she kind of like waves. I was following you on your boat. A part in the appearance as well. Uh, it was a long swim. And then fly. I flew for a bit, but I was swimming first. And then I... Well, I, fo I was following your boat. Sorry, you have no idea who I am. No, you look... You certainly do look familiar, but I can't believe I wouldn't remember you. I'm not sure you caught my name. Perhaps you did. Well, you may know me as Sarah. One of the Sarahs. Oh, the wives of the gentleman who was... Oh. oh. Oh, yes. How did all that play out? Atticus' expression darkens. <laughs> but Not. you drowned. Hello, um, sir. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, way up with the crow's nest. I was, I'm not. She puts a hand up when you say the wife of. She puts her hand up. I was not his wife. Nyral Twiceborn doesn't actually take wives. He takes concubines, and I was one of his consorts. Ooh. 
And um, what? You escaped. Exactly. Is that not obvious? So why us? Why did you follow us? Why not? Not many people stop in Riverton. I saw you coming. I foretold your losses, and I'm sorry for them. And I decided it was a perfect opportunity. Really. I mean, thank you, I should say. You provided an excellent distraction, and the ceremony went off without a hitch. No one thought a thing. I assure you, it was far more meaningful to us than a distraction. We lost our allies. And did I hear you say you foretold it? Yes. Explain yourself. What does that mean? I have a gift, which is why I was taken. Nairo twice born uses people. That's sort of his deal. And he used me for my gifts and kept me trapped. I have seen abilities, not always and not always strong, but I saw your ship coming. I saw your losses, and there was nothing that I could possibly do. Please understand. And I am sorry. I'm sure you were friends. But it was my only chance. And I took it. So I thank you. And now... I guess I'm here asking... If you would be able to take me in on your ship. I have no money. I have no friends in this region. I don't know anyone. I was taken here years ago. I've been trapped. This is the first time I've ever escaped Riverton and Nyril and the Hasper cult. So please. I'm too proud to beg, but I need passage. Uh, sorry, might, might we confer for a moment before we give you a final decision? Absolutely, I completely understand. Also, as a sign of good faith, my name is Sukiorana Isolde. That's my real name. I haven't been able to use it in years, but... It's an elven name. If you can't pronounce it, it's okay. Suki is fine. Suki. Right. One moment, Suki. I'll leave you to it. And she just walks away. Okay. And I, I turn to Atticus. She goes back and stares from far away. <laughs> it's like, well, all right, there's a few factors here that I think we have to take into account. One, uh, there's not a lot of room on the boat. Two, although, two, we are still a person short. Uh, three, she really does creak me out, but that could be a good thing. And four, this is a classic, as we call it where I'm from, wait in the truck situation. So this is a great <laughs> opportunity for us to do a good deed for someone, for a stranger. Yes, and perhaps, perhaps benefit in the bargain. Oh, she's an angel. <laughs> well, I had sent... I had sent... Uh, oh my God, what's her name? Uh, what's the captain's name? Blank. Skywin. 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 I keep thinking Starling, because that's the name of the boat. Skywin. I had sent Skywin ashore looking for a sword, and I think we found one already. Perhaps we could use this vision she says she has. She could see the future. It could be invaluable, Aldo. And she said she flew part of the way, and she's got to be an excellent swimmer. If she I made mean, it like an astounding far. swimmer. It's hard to comprehend, actually. Um, I mean, that alone, just being able to rescue Xantar the next time he falls off the boat. True. That, that'll yes. be worthwhile just on its own. Xantar be... does not fall. <laughs> <laughs> but can she be trusted? O.J. Simpson is. In <laughs> what? <laughs> you're up and about again. <laughs> oh. O.J., you're not permanent member of group. Sorry. I just wanted to know. It's a good, good point. Do I get to have a? Do I get to Ethel, voice it? Ethel, I know here? we, I know we just met, but in this situation, I would like you to make the decision. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's your call. I think after all we've been through, it's your call. <laughs> Boat is already very full. <laughs> no, I'm. I agree with you, Zantar. It is full, but we are catering to wet knees and whatever their names are I don't bother to remember them week to week she glides back over towards the boat 
none of them present squish, 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 such a squish, skill squish. as this one seems to have. Yeah. Pardon me. Uh, uh, hold, please. Uh, we're not hold, sorry. please. Sorry. <laughs> Ethel has not spoken. We're still discussing. You spoke oh, sorry. I didn't see you. Well, men are deciding minutes. about a woman. I <laughs> <laughs> Your Majesty, please. <laughs> My apologies. Sorry. I think there's only one thing we can do here, one reasonable option. Mm -hmm. It's the same option you gave me. Bring up O.J. Simpson, see what she can do to him, oh and if she passes the test. Right. <laughs> no, it's true. Yes. Could she perhaps yeah. look into O.J. Simpson's future? See what he may do one day? Orenthal, <laughs> come on up here. I think got I got can another, take her. Got another quick uh, flavor that we need of you. And I push O.J. Uh, to the fore and say, uh, uh, Suki, uh, if you wouldn't mind uh, showing us what you're capable of on this gentleman here. Uh, listen, I, 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 have, I have no problem with you. I, uh, I learned the hard way not to mess with new recruits. Um, she turns to the group. You want me to fight him? Yeah, I mean, in whatever way you feel most effective. You don't what? have to kill him, if, if that's oh. against your moral principles, but at least put him down, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Come on, Walk man. Him. Yeah. Uh, uh, come on, man. Dead. Juice alone. <laughs> Use your water magic to fill his lungs with fluid. <laughs> okay. Uh, if this the is juice what is you'd like. Feel good again. If this is what you'd like and how you allow people on your boat, uh, I will do this. What you doing? Uh, <laughs> it's all right, OJ. It's I all know. right. I she kick puts... him in the back down the gangplank. Oh, God. Why'd you, why'd you kick me? <laughs> she, lifts, she lifts him up. She's so tall. She lifts him up and places him next to her and pats him on the shoulder and takes a step back. Are you ready? Uh, for, for, ready for what? what? What is she doing? And she puts her, okay, her arm out, like kind of pointing a finger. And from her back, almost, a snake slithers, coiling down her arm onto the ground and slithers up towards OJ. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> she says, <laughs> and the snake launches at OJ. <laughs> 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 just goes around his neck and starts to constrict him and grapple <laughs> him. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> She's cool. She's oh cool. my God. The Jews is strangled. <laughs> <laughs> she looks around, not wanting to draw attention on the docks, and looks around and uh, she goes, May I call him back? Uh, as as this is happening, as OJ is thrashing on the on the ground, Atticus just turns to Aldo and is like, "The snake must have been a very good swimmer as well." Yeah. <laughs> Water. And, uh, all probably. right. Yeah. Yes. This is like a two for one deal for us. All right. Okay. That that is enough. That is enough, Suki. Rest Let uh, release him. Rest. <sighs> the snake goes back and. Ooh. Did no, you hang get chills? Hang on. Hang on. Hang yes. on. <sighs> I've seen snake charmers in my day. <laughs> You better prove you can repeat that. Is that repeatable? What? Yeah, I would. What do you mean? We would need to see it twice. I mean, that could be a one and done type deal. So do it to OJ again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Santar really movie, hates so. OJ. Uh, I'm filming she, a movie next week. She says. <laughs> <laughs> the not juice is choking. Not on my watch. <laughs> no, you're not. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> She it does it again, long. but this time yeah. the snake bites OJ uh, on the arm. Oh, son of a... Oh, that's my acting arm. Say it off. Bites us. All right, I'm sold. Right, beautiful. Fantastic. Extremely effective. Right, right. Come, come up here. Let us get you some shoes at the very least. No. Right. Sorry. I, I prefer not to wear shoes. It's a choice. Not because I don't own them. You want like a towel or something? No, thank you. But thank you. Oh, are you just always wet? Head. So no. That I'm is not. a very rude question to ask of a lady, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Please, I will not send for this. I'm so tempted to say this meme, but I don't know if I could 
Can I say bad word on stream? <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna say it, I'm not gonna say it. Yep, say it. It's We've the, already crossed a bunch of lines. <laughs> I don't even know if you guys would know it. It's the pussy stay wet with the fan on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said it, because I have nope. no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> but it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> that's uh, Suki. So oh, she's, hi. She, she corrects you. <laughs> she says, I'm not always wet. I'm not like a sweaty person or something. I swear, I was swimming. I just crawled up on the dock and I didn't have time to dry off yet. But you are always barefoot. Yes. Some like okay. shoes. Well, I mean, we just wanted to ensure that you had... There are two things that we need out of people that we uh, associate with on this boat because we've got a lot, got a lot of uh, difficult times coming up, we think. Of course. As in the past. Two things you look for. Character. You've got to have a lot of character and you've got to have a lot of class. So I'm interested in your character and class. Character <laughs> class. That's so interesting that you ask. Well, uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. <laughs> this is still like we're yelling from the boat down to the ground. Yeah. Can I, <laughs> still won't let on the boat. Can I come the on the boat? Let me tell you a dock. little about myself. <laughs> can I come on the boat? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. It's fair enough. Don't know me. That's fine. Um, I'm from Kionin originally. Right, Kionin. Oh, yes. yes. The land of the elves. Land of yes. the elves. But obviously I'm... I was kidnapped, so I haven't been there in a while. Right, we're not quite, heading in that direction. I'm quite old. Are you? That's excellent. No, we're, no, we're not. We're heading in the opposite direction. Oh. Okay. Um, I mean, I'll if you're still it. interested, uh, I mean, so, I think we can work something out. But I'm not trying to get back there. Honestly, I'm 190 years old. I've I've seen quite a lot, so I'm I'm sort of just oh my happy to be free again, and I can go off and do my own thing. Where was the snake when you were being a thrall to some guy? Oh, they um, they took him from me. Oh, does your snake have a name? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Yes. Pepsi. What might it be? It's Pepsi. Pepsi. <laughs> that is incredible. That is this incredible. Is I have a strange fascination with Pepsi, and he pulls out the jar of homemade Pepsi from his satchel. Like, I've got a whole jar of it, Leah. Look, it's incredible. What an amazing coincidence! I mean, this is this is for all ordained. This is amazing. I, this is I this is indeed fate. Wow, I didn't know that Pepsi was a liquid. I simply thought it was a fun word to say. I wonder That's if Pe Pepsi would like Pepsi. Maybe he could try it. I'll, I'll be happy to share some with him. Maybe he'd get along with the wordner here. And his little uh, his tumor on the side of his neck starts squirming. Oh, you you have a friend as well. I do. He's a bit shy, but he mm. loves artificial Pepsi as well. Hopefully he'll love the real thing. Anyway, um, I, I don't really know what else to tell you, um, aside from my druidic order, I suppose, which is wild when I tell you. You're going to think it's crazy. It's wild. <laughs> my druidic is order is wild. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! What is it? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's wild. I, I don't want to blow you up your spot, out. but I know what wild druids do. That is awesome. <laughs> but, uh, so, are we ever going to learn what the order is? Uh, yep, and it's pretty wild. Um, and uh, metagaming wise, just so you, well, not metagaming, but outside gaming, I took a feat which also gives me an animal companion. So I get best of both worlds. I get my oh. animal companion. I really built out this character in such a cool fucking way. So that power. is her, such her a animal power companion. Such a power game. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Well, Shut your mouth. We already have team member who lives in the wilds and can commune with animals. So thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> but Xantar is already filling that position. Xantar, you were not in my vision. Were you not on the I beach? No, I... And then he goes back to the crow's nest. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell when an animal is so embarrassed they have to leave, and that seemed to be that sort of situation. I'm so... 
I th- I'm fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's all right. Please, please do come aboard. Yeah, uh, please, oh, please. Thank you, thank you. A, a little help. Oh, no, sorry. OJ's like swollen from the snake bite. <laughs> Walk it off. Walk it off, OJ. He's got like sausage fingers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I told him not to oh, use poison. You're, oh, not, you're not going to die. Uh, no more, no more people on the boat. <laughs> No, OJ, I guarantee you, you will not be asked to do such a thing again, unless one of us should die. Oh, mm-hmm. Zeus is tired. <laughs> OJ, Come on. would you introduce me to the people on the boat? One by one. <laughs> one by one. Sure. And he does. And so OJ Simpson <laughs> introduces you to all 25 people on the boat. She doesn't care. She does not ask for that. That was a joke. She doesn't give a shit. She just goes, that's a lot of people on a small boat. <laughs> He's actually like Norberg now on Naked oh, Gun. Yeah. He's, like He's all on a wheelchair. Fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> With like a head bandage. Heroin, um, Frank. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Sarasuki, uh, I've written your name as Sarasuki Sarah on I love 20. it. That's even um, better. <laughs> Sarasuki Sarah joins uh, the crew. Uh, maybe a little reluctancy uh, on the part of some of the crew members to see this uh, sopping wet elf. Um, stroll slosh on board um, and having seen what you did to OJ Simpson there's a a bit of fear uh, amongst the uh, people who are afraid of such magics they are but simple fisher folk Um, but you come aboard or maybe one of them is a senator maybe one of them is a senator I don't know I feel like the Grey Gardener would have uh, picked them out but uh, they're gone and now Suki is aboard a couple hours later, you see Skywind return with uh, whoever she went with. I think it was Dinky and uh, a couple others. Uh, she comes back, and the first thing she sees is Ethel and Suki aboard. And she's like, uh, Aldo, Atticus, Xantar, a word. Aye, aye, Captain. Who are these people? Well, we've come into contact with a few others we think can be effective in defending the boat, rather more than this lot. A sword we've hired in Ethel Merman. He is a mercenary and is quite skilled with magical blades. Which one's Ethel? The, the wet elf or the... Ethel is the uh, small, weak-looking man. <laughs> <laughs> the, the gaunt... Uh, Yes. He's, he's, wear, he's actually he's, an enormous He's actually sort of rather trapezoid shape. Yeah. <laughs> he just happens to wear glasses. So I'm just, sorry, myopia right. renders people weak in your eyes. <laughs> yeah. <Bill. laughs> a tiny man there. He yes. can help us. I know he doesn't look it. He looks like he's only good for whittling, but he can do so much more. And the elf, she was on the beach in it wasn't called Riverton, right? We're in Riverton now. No, you're in uh, Debril now. Oh, it, it was, was Riverton. Riverton, yeah. She was on the beach in Riverton. A thrall to that maniac. I don't understand. She... We, we, we left them behind. In fact, we saw him drown one of his companions. Yes, she escaped in the distraction and swam for several miles. Flew for some as well. She is quite an incredible creature. A druid. A druid. He lowers his voice. I see oh, yeah. Have you, uh, have you talked to them and, and questioned them and feel that their uh, desires are true? Yes, yeah. well, uh, his desires are simple enough. He wants money. He's really, he's trying to get a divorce or something. He's got, he owes alimony, I don't know, child support, something of that nature. And he desperately needs the cash, which to me is the most trustworthy way to get people to go on these sort of adventures. And she, uh, she has been stolen away, kidnapped, and, uh, far from home for very long. She is just looking for sanctuary, and I'm sure that you'd be willing to offer it, knowing the kind of captain you are. Yes, well, perhaps this is a blessing, having lost two members of your team to bring two more on. Um, what happened to O.J. Simpson? <laughs> <laughs> he was tested and found wanting. <laughs> right, well... Uh, I'm back. I think we have enough supplies here that should last us a good 10, maybe even 14 days. Um, We'll see. Uh, 
The next leg of our journey will move quickly if the currents go our way, so let's board up and leave. Were there any other problems? And she's like now coming aboard, well, eyeing the new people. We did have one other visitor, uh, a, a grey gardener, in fact, who, what? yeah, I mean, she was looking for some senator, uh, Gargamel, Emelian, Emilio, Emilio Gargamelian. A fat man. A fat what? fool. Portly fool. Portly fool. And she thought he was aboard our vessel. I no, suppose. she simply was checking every vessel is the, uh, my understanding. I see, yes, the grey gardeners are not to be trifled with. I'm surprised she found issue, or they, I didn't know it was a woman, uh, <laughs> found issue with our vessel. Um, did she come aboard and, and search? Did she question you? She did. She, she did. came on board and she went all through and talked to all 48 people and she seemed satisfied that this person was not on the, board the boat, but it was certainly it was a bit nerve-wracking for us, I'll tell you that. She did not find me, Boat Queen. I hid in the crow's nest. That's true. That's true. <laughs> good, good. They are, most of them, uh, magic users. They have strange sorceries that they can use. This is all the more reason for us to hurry and leave. We don't want to cause any trouble here in this lawless nation. Let's go. Dinky! And uh, you raise anchor uh, within the hour, within like 40 minutes, <clears throat> and you're off. And, uh, you know, maybe that night is uh, there's some time spent where she, uh, she calls in Ethel and, and talks to Ethel to get to know you a little bit. She likes to know the people on her boat so that she can judge you to be trustworthy. She does the same with uh, Suki. So where, um, are you, where are you from originally? I want to, I'd, like to, I'd like to know. And she tells you and goes into her whole backstory. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, a real, it's a real good story um, that she tells you. And uh, Suki, if you ask any of those questions, she regales you with tales of her uh, time in Shelly Axe. What's and the nicest thing you've ever done for someone? <laughs> she goes and tells you. For a stranger, for a stranger. For a stranger. I let sorry. these 50 thralls fall. <laughs> Fair enough. Yes, yes. We're currently in the middle of the nicest thing she's ever done. Have you met the Edge Lord? I killed a guy for free. Yeah. <laughs> Sharky says Troy dodging like he's in the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> deflecting roleplay. Deflecting roleplay. Deflecting roleplay. <laughs> well done. Um so yeah, you are you are kind of off again, and uh she doesn't have any uh, uh, stop in mind right now. She's really trying to make good time here where she had to add that stop in River Tendon. You know, you obviously lost time when, uh, you know, your, your friends passed. And so now she wants to try and make up for lost time as best she can. You're about, um, at this point, uh, 610 miles and 52 days into your journey. Um, so if you you know, uh, hoping that the boat isn't uh, molested again, you can dig back into your research uh, of the next uh, dream journey. And uh, you had been uh, learning a few things about this next one. The next item on the list is, I believe, a uh, an idol of a lizard. Let's see what I have here in my notes. A green stone idol of a water lizard. So you were, uh, you were looking into that. Oak rug. <clears throat> yes, you uh, you found out that the uh, the water lizard wasn't a lizard at all. It was indeed oak rug, a great Bokrug. old one, an unimaginably powerful great old one. That is what this uh, statue is a representation of. Um, days passed, and you learn some more things. Uh, you find in the count's notes a a horrid treatise. Uh, collating rumors of all the great old ones, um, asserting that that Bokrug uh, lived in a vast, unnamed lake somewhere in the Dreamlands, um, and there was a, a a race of alien creatures who founded a, a, a city called Ib Ib on the shores of this lake long, long ago, and they. Uh, they built this city to <laughs> worship 
Bokrug. It was like built on this lake as they believed that the great old one Bokrug resided in this lake in the dreamlands. And so they landed there and they built this uh, you know, city of stone to worship Bokrug. Um, and this idol of green stone was, was central to their rites. You continue reading and you find this uh, several quasi-historical dissertations relating how Ib was destroyed by proud and warlike humans who were disgusted by the aliens' bizarre rites and unusual uh, physiognomy, um, is what it has here. They didn't like the way they looked. Um, and these humans were from a city called Sarnath. And after they destroyed Ib, uh, the f the folk of Sarnath carried away this strange green idol that was a big part of their worshiping rites, and they housed it in one of their temples. But if, evidently, uh, very soon thereafter, the idol disappeared, even though all of Ib, all of Ib's inhabitants were wiped out. The idol just up and disappeared. More days pass, and uh, luckily, uh, even though uh, quarters are cramped, uh, there's no more people signaling for help that then attack you, and you're able to really dig into this research, and you find the proper phrase to use the Dreamlands excursion ritual to take you somewhere. Now, rather than, uh, I learned the hard way in Nashville, rather than just having you all roll these things and fail and then roll and fail, uh, I have all your information, so I rolled everything uh, to determine the results. Um, I also got rolls from most of you as well to kind of... Oh, that's what that was for. Yeah, to see in the middle what would happen. So, you failed the first night, but you don't critically fail. You failed again the second night, but don't critically fail. That's uh, about right. Came very close the second night. But on the third night, you succeed. Now, how do you explain this yeah, process? Yeah, I was going to say, like, we have to we have to role play this for an extended yeah. period of time. So, where are we going exactly? <laughs> Ethel, we discussed this very briefly on uh, when we first met, but now we are getting into the nitty gritty. This is Suki. You really should be here too. Oh no, I already know about this. Oh, you do. You kn <laughs> you know about all this. <laughs> Well, I mean, a bit. I do study dreams, of course. Are you just oh. trying to end the show in two hours? <laughs> <laughs> because well played. I, <laughs> I seem to know, oh, what time is it? I seem to know all the information. Um, yada, 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 we do the dream, yada, 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 fight the beast or whatever. Um, Suki. Yes. Have you, your magics, they are primal in nature. Have you ever crossed over into anything like the dreamlands no not actually i mean i've astral projected i studied zodiacs uh astrology dreams you name it i've had plenty of time and i thoroughly enjoy the work but i've only really dipped my toe you know scratched the surface and then i got kidnapped and that took a lot of time away from my studies so i feel kind of giddy to dive back in, but I don't know much about the dreamlands. Is it one of those, if you die in the dreamlands, you die in real life scenarios? No, uh, oh. it can mess you up, but you won't die in real life. So. And Be your... wary elf woman. Long was I trapped in the dreamlands, suffering indignities at the hands of strange fell creatures. Be wary. <laughs> Let the doom that came to Zarnath fall upon you. Why would you? And he that? scratches himself. <laughs> yeah, I don't mean any disrespect, but could someone explain Xantar maybe a little later? Does he to talk me? like does he talk like that because of the dreamlands? Probably or or his language center is somehow left undeveloped by his time in the dreamlands. He is simply not as civilized as you. Me really am way of talking very inconsistent. <laughs> <laughs> is he really a king? He is, yes. Yes, really? yes and he would refer, prefer it if you refer to him as your grace or your majesty. Ah. Oh. Yes, and uh, no direct eye contact. Oh. Uh, except uh, under the most extreme circumstances. 
Only was, speak when spoken to. He spends a lot of time in the crow's nest so that his head can remain above ours. Just make sure your head right. never rises above his height. Got it will it. be most difficult for you, Suki. You will probably mostly have to crawl around on deck. I also make extreme eye contact. I've been told before it's uncomfortable mm. at times. And she makes well, extreme eye contact yeah. with everyone. <laughs> piercing a, green eyes. If he's a king, what is he doing here with us? Uh, he is uh, temporarily uh, deposed. He searches ah, for his mother. He's a pretender king. I he's seek an exile. He's I protect the these weaklings from the predators of the dreamlands. Yes. Without me, they would long ago have had their souls stripped from their bodies. Well, Was it not I who rescued the last artifact? Yes, it, it, ah! was, it was your grace. <laughs> you see what happens, Ethel, when you get him riled up. Please. Getting him worked up. I, my apologies, your grace. I didn't know. I was just <laughs> curious. Uh, I, I, I bow to you and respect your sovereign majesty over the, the Zoogs, was it? Zoogs, yeah, correct. I the point of, is... I kind of climb kind of up onto Ethel Merman a little bit, kind of just asserting dominance for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> you climb on to climb on. <laughs> Yeah, you know, just, like Are you humping my shoulder? <laughs> I'm, I'm picking I'm picking uh things out of your hair. Ah. <laughs> so this Once he uh, begins it's best to just let him finish. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and this is like Dreamland's behavior, this kind of thing? Can I expect this? No, it no, is this Zoog is the behavior. real world. Zug behavior. Yeah. Yeah. No, Suki, Suki slow blinks at Xantar to see if he'll respond like a cat. She's trying to figure out what animal <laughs> he's most related to. Uh, and when, she looks in slow blinking, <laughs> respect, and submission. Yeah, when Suki uh, gives eye contact to Xantar, he sort of can't. <laughs> and then he kind of he does crawl away like under like the bed like a cat. <laughs> Suki takes note. Interesting. I'll try dog next time, perhaps. The point is, Ethel, Suki, once we cross over, the ritual is very intense. It does not always succeed. And there is a great danger in even attempting it, so be on your guard should we fail. But should we succeed, we will enter a realm that is not reality, but will feel quite like it. There is a certain intoxicating feeling to it, the invincibility, but do not be too taken in by it. A death in the dreamlands has lingering effects in the real world. It is mental damage that you take. Do you feel pain if you get hurt in the dreamlands? You do, but it's hard to explain. Okay. It's also euphoria. It hurts so good. It's so good. Come on, baby, make it hurt. But you also may, you must be prepared to see things that your mind cannot quite comprehend in there. And what exactly we, are we looking for? Sorry to interrupt. I'm just a bit confused about your end goal. We are collecting certain artifacts so that we may reach one who knows more about our past. Ad Aldo and I both suffer from amnesia as a result of uh, some of these dark magics. We seek to learn our past. And the man who knows it is in Casimir and has already, it appears, perhaps crossed into the dreamlands more permanently. We need these artifacts so that we can make the journey ourselves. All right, great. Thanks for all that. Uh, Follow-up question. So our bodies are just going to sit here on the boat. Yes, with... have you seen Inception? Yes. Uh, I have seen Inception. Uh, that was in, that was a good one. Uh, I was a little confused by the multiple layers, but um, is someone going to, like, come down here? Are we, like... Pancake gonna... in Basement Betty shall protect us. <laughs> that was my question. Can we trust any of these randos on your boat not to stick our hand in a bowl of warm water or worse while the, we're, we're going through this? No, hasn't happened yet. Uh, so far, they've been trustworthy, so I think they've, they've proven themselves. And uh, just have to have a little bit of faith, my old chum. 
chucks him on the shoulder. This giant trapezoidal shoulder. Pancake comes rushing down. Did you guys do your ritual yet? <laughs> I'd like to be in a separate room when we do the ritual, with a lock from the inside. Let me know when you go to sleep. Silence, Pancake. Back to your place. Oh. Pancake goes back. I'm sorry. <laughs> Silence, Pancake. <laughs> Silence, Pancake. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I believe is not only that they respect us and are appreciative of our saving them, but I believe truly they fear us. They fear what goes on down here. The captain herself is quite discomforted by it. Half she knows it is the cost of our passage. Hmm. Well, um, I guess we should go, right? Yes. Yeah. No time like tonight. Prison. I feel we will definitely succeed at the ritual. I have a good feeling about tonight as well, Atticus. Correct. And you fail that night. <laughs> oh, <and the> next <laughs> night. Ah, you son of a bitch! <laughs> but the third night, <laughs> I think at this point, Suki and Ethel are like, "Oh yeah, sure, the Dreamland excursion <laughs> ritual." Hey, it's their money. <laughs> they want to pay me to stand there while we hold the little tiny staircase. Hold I'm, the little I'm staircase. Yeah, the first night it just goes around and it's still really tiny. And you told them this whole story. Oh, it's going to yeah. get bigger. <laughs> and then you drop it. Uh, oh! <laughs> Damn it. But the third night, sure enough, they begin. And they pass it around. And Suki and Ethel, you see uh, this little tiny wooden staircase. And by the time it comes around to you, it's like grown four sizes and you're holding it with two hands and having to leverage it while you recite the words that they told you and then they hand it over again and it's like holding a, a boulder until it comes back around to the last of you who drops it on the floor and there's a staircase just leading down into what you would assume is the sea but Aldo and Atticus and Xantar have now taken these this stairwell several times. So they walk down, perhaps beckoning you to follow. And you do. And immediately, when each of you enter the stairs, you turn back around and you don't see any of your companions. People that were right there behind you are gone. And you're just walking down and you feel like you should be underwater, but it's just a staircase that keeps going and it's made out of like knotty, knobby wood. And eventually it's like carpeted and uh, it looks to be this like purple uh, with gold filigree on the end, this carpet that stretches out until each of you find yourself in a, uh, an opulent feasting hall packed with thousands upon thousands of people uh, enjoying a, a, a grand feast. It looks like some sort of festival is happening. Uh, there are high arched windows on uh, three sides of this chamber as far as you can see. I mean, the, the, the space is huge and you're just immediately packed in uh, by people. There are golden torches affixed to the walls uh, uh, illuminating this this festive throng of people. There, You look up and you see balconies crowded with people and staircases winding up and over the vast hall. Uh, looking around you, all the attendees are draped in garments sewn from gorgeous silk, satins, and velvets. The, their arms and their necks are hung with gold bands, and, and some of them have these headdresses that go all the way up, uh, studded with jewels, with bright feathers coming out. You see tables of uh, rich foods and intoxicating beverages lining the walls, drawing these partygoers who, who are like gorging themselves on the offerings and, and huddled closely in small groups and, and and even as your eyes begin to adjust, uh, intimate embraces. In fact, as you really start to take in the scene, almost everywhere you look, people are either stuffing themselves full of food, uh, like too much, too much food, or locked in like a carnal embrace. If you see into any shadowy hallways, you see people having sex in the hallway and like lots of people. It is not an orgy. It is just a full-on bacchanal. Um, 
and, and, and the guests who aren't engaged in either of those two things are at least locked in some sort of drunk conversation while everyone else is dancing, dancing to this, the otherworldly tones of an orchestra that you do not see that's composed primarily of flutes, pipes, drums. It's this weird, unsettling, discordant music that everyone is way into. Um, you think back, those of you that were at the Viscount's Ball, by comparison, that was just as crowded and, and obviously problematic, but in much more subtle ways. It was still a, a solemn, courtly affair, whereas this is just an unrestrained uh, bacchanal. Hey, I start. smell the scent of rutting. <laughs> <laughs> rutting and hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, I take some food off the table and eat it. It is delicious. Just you know, like a turkey leg dripping with grease down your chin. Uh, and you are just prompted to like tear into it while your other hand is grabbing the other one. You can't get enough of it in your mouth. It's so good. Um, I had mentioned there were some windows on three of the walls, but you see the north and northwest wall of the, the ballroom that you find yourself in bears no windows. And in fact, it's, it's, it's constructed of what looks like thick slabs of stone that just go up. It's much taller uh, than the rest of the walls um, uh, that are abutting it. It goes up and up. There's no adornments, no windows whatsoever, just the torches uh, that are all about. You do see uh, what looks like a plain stone staircase carved into uh, the middle of the wall, but it's partially uh, concealed by thin screens, kind of like a casino. They don't want you to see the exits. Um, and as each of you just find yourselves in this space, you look around and you don't see any of your allies. You are just alone oh. in this party. Mm. What do you want to do? Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's thousands of people and you're alone. Suki is fascinated because she studies dream lore and now to be in the dreamlands, like viscerally experiencing the dreams of many, the dreams of someone, an unknown person, and she's kind of like muttering as she walks around. She's like, it's fascinating. Food often represents emotions in dreams. And here we have a feast that would represent the overindulgence, the greediness, the selfishness, and the carnal lovemaking, of course, adds up. And she's just like muttering and like is fascinated by this and doesn't even realize that she's not with the group. Completely forgot about them. And she's like enthralled. She's just like, oh, wow, what's behind this? She just walks around. Xantar, you're still chowing on that food. He's climbed onto the table now. <laughs> <laughs> and no one gives you a second look. There are okay. three other people on the table as well, just pouring gravy on each other. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That was pretty awesome, honestly. <laughs> a little jealous of us. Um, I approach and sniff at the people pouring gravy on each other and try to see if they appear to be under some sort of spell, whether they seem completely conscious or zombie-like. Give me a perception check. Yeah. Well, let me do that. <laughs> I got one it, I got it. pouring a little gravy bowl, the other one's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> perception check. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go, 15. <laughs> 15. Um, they appear to just be really intoxicated and they find this to be hilarious. And if you come over and start smelling them, they just like splash a little gravy on you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just join them. And you just join the gravy. Sure, fight. gravy, it's delicious. Uh, it's and it's so good. I mean, it's just like warm, but not too hot. It doesn't burn your throat. It just goes down thick, and it feels so good mixing with that turkey leg. And they're in it, and uh, it starts to get a little sexual. They are, between them, they're not sure where you stand on that. But clearly, now, Troy, the let's role play this fully. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, 
one of them reaches into your pants. No, it's uh, it, it seems like the invite is open if you wanted to join them, um, but. I think it. Xantar is not quite that bestial. I think he's uh, he's wary. He knows the dreamlands are filled with uh, ruses and tricksy illusions, and uh, he sort of uh, backs away when it gets that serious. Gets a little steamy. They start ripping yeah. each other's clothes and pouring gravy on it. It's a food sex party. Um, Ethel, this is very new to you, I imagine. Not, maybe not what you signed up for. Yeah, I think Ethel's a little bit wary of everything and suspicious. So I think he, when he realizes he's uh, lost his companions, he's just trying to play it cool and uh, keep his eyes out for anything that might point to the the, the little green statuette that we're looking for. Um, can I roll a perception to see if I see anybody wearing anything? Yeah, absolutely. Or if I see it in the decoration, perhaps. Cracked eye. Okay, uh, natural 18 or a 33. Nice. Um, you look around and uh, there, like as I mentioned, there's a lot going on, a lot of people. It's hard to really take stock of anything because it's hard to see over the crowds, um, but you don't see any idol on display um, or anything that really stands out like they're worshiping something. They just seem to be having a big old party. Uh, it's a lot of people. It's almost uncomfortably packed in here. It's hard to maneuver around. Uh, as you're standing there, maybe a, a, a guy with like a big uh, Ambrose Burnside uh, handlebar mustache comes up to you and goes, <laughs> you're having trouble too? Finding a, finding a partner, as it were? <laughs> Listen, man, after my last divorce, I don't, I'm just not interested. Not right now. It's just too. It's just the the pain just hurts too much. It's hurt. It's like it's like get into your. It's your heart, right? Like rend your heart open, and then what are you supposed to do? Go on and move on with your life? I mean, that's your li that's your heart right there. No, no, no. The best medicine you can take is more of the good stuff. You know what I'm talking about? I've been trying all night and striking out. Um, Have you considered it might be your facial hair? I don't want to. I don't want to judge. But oh, are you kidding me? This is the ladies love this. The men too. Perhaps uh, you and I could go into a hallway and see what happens. Uh, no, uh, thanks for the invitation. But like I said, heart ripped our open pain, lingering effects of. Uh, you know, being in love with someone and then them telling you they're not in love with you anymore. It's, uh, it's deep. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts deep, man. He, I'm sorry. he leans for it. You can just smell wine and, and liquor on him. He's like, I could be your heart's medicine tonight. <laughs> That's very kind of you. Uh, actually, I'm looking for somebody who might know something about a lizard. Lizard? Ha 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 ha! Now we're talking! I don't know anything about a lizard. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, over there. Call me! <laughs> and he starts Good luck. humping a roast beef. Uh, what is Aldo doing? Aldo is sort of just walking down this the rows of people, just like pass by. Hey, Good eye. Hello? Oh, that looks a bit uncomfortable, eh? eh? He's just like going, <laughs> keep going by. And uh, I'm going to do a perception check as well. Okay. Uh, that is a 28. Okay, what are you looking for in particular? I am looking for any evidence of this uh, idol we're looking for. Okay, so you too try to take stock of this room and... and, and same as Ethel, you don't really see anything matching the, you know, an idol of a, a green idol of a green water lizard or anything like that. There's nothing jumping out at you. However, you do see a woman uh, looking at you and she has like blue stained teeth because she smiles at you. Uh, she's completely bald, uh, except for like a little uh, round circle of hair and she just smiles and she walks over uh, slowly towards you. Um, it almost looks like she's draped in um, like a bunch of handkerchiefs that you can almost completely see through. And she points at you, doesn't get too close, but she's like, you are not from around here. No, good eye. Uh, yeah, good on you. No, I'm, I'm actually uh, just visiting. Yes, uh, visiting. In fact, you aren't even from where you're from. Is Yuna correct? 
Yuna, is it? Um, well, yes, I suppose. Uh, it's one way of putting things. Do you know who you are? It's a complicated question. I know I have some idea. Uh, uh, you seem to uh, know a lot yourself. You seem to pierce the veil of uh, what I'm. What, what's uh, where she are you from? At, she looks at her handkerchiefs as you say veil. Yes, yes, pierce the veil. I see something in you. So many people hear yet your voice calling to me, screaming to me. Are you sad? Well, I mean, we all have our days, but, uh, no, I mean, I'm generally a fairly upbeat person, I think. Do you think you would be more happy if you went home? And he thinks about it for a second, he's like, Ooh, uh, yeah, I mean, there would be, uh, benefits to going back and drawbacks. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, I could do, but I'd, I'd hate to at the same time. I've got friends here and you see some of them waiting over there. I, I don't know, I'd hate to leave them in the lurch. Mm. Well, what of your other friends? The ones you left behind, they must really miss you. Friends. Yeah. What were you gonna say? Yeah, he gets, then he, he does like get sad. He de like, he, he definitely is homesick. Uh, but he's also a very much a wanted man, back where he's from. And she so, just like closes her eyes and like, again, lifts her hand towards you, now getting a little bit closer, and she's like, she misses you. She calls for you when she's awake and when she's asleep. Why did you abandon her? Why? And he, like, he's shaking his finger at her, says, all right, now, now you just hold on one moment. Now, 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 where, where, where are you getting this from? Who have you been talking to? I don't talk to anyone. I just listen. She starts to walk away, to blend into the crowd. And he's like sweating a little bit, he's like looking around. He's, uh, pours himself, he grabs a, a cup off of one of the tables and he pours himself a little homemade Pepsi. <laughs> Takes a little bit of a sip. He's just sort of like patting Werner, like in his in his goiter. Then we cut to Atticus. And Atticus, your mind has been addled ever since you left the necropolis in the dreamlands where you died and you awoke on the material plane with this nagging feeling of, uh, of, of uh, a delusion that this new person that was brought aboard, Ave Maria, was out to get you. But now that you uh, find yourself here in this party, that feeling, which was still lingering even after her death, is completely gone. You don't feel delusional at all. Do I recognize that it's gone or I just don't think of it? You just feel like confused, kind of like, wait, you know, like you wake up from a dream and you're like, wait a minute, was that, am I dreaming still or is that still real? That moment where you can't quite suss out. Was I ever mad at her? Mm -hmm. Maybe I just dreamed that I was mad at her, mad at her or thought that she was evil. And now you find yourself here in this party people are taking an interest in you because you're the only rat folk at the party. This is exactly where I was going to, I was going to change things up here. Um, can I get out of sight? Like, is it possible to just like 
casually slide behind a curtain or into a small whatever uh, room or cubby where there isn't prying eyes. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, I've been watching a lot of House of the Dragon. Uh, you know, it's like being at one of those uh, brothels in King's Landing. You're just walking through these hallways. Right. It's just people making love in the darkness. There's silhouettes. Um, and so I think he's rather well through. dressed, right? Mm-hmm. But I want to I want to try something that I, I have never done before. So he first thing he's going to do is quickly uh, he's going to cast mage armor <laughs> on himself. When he sees that he's alone, he feels a little unprotected. So he's going to cast mage armor on himself. And then can I, I I want to do something that takes 10 minutes of preparation. Can can I have like 10 minutes to do something? Yeah. um, You know, from time to time, people might come and proposition you and you can wave them away. And if you get involved in some sort of casting, uh, if anything, you'll draw a small crowd, but people are so wrapped up in what they're doing. You're away from the main action and it's dark. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this comes from my arcane thesis, like my first level wizard, like you choose a path, like when you first start. And this comes from my arcane thesis and I've never used it. And it's, it's an ability called spell substitution. Mm. So I can take 10 minutes and unprepare any spell slot and prepare something else in that slot with, mm. from my spell book. And so mm. what I want to do is I want to like taking this all in and feeling alone, not knowing uh, where I am and seeing that I'm the only rat folk. Mm -hmm. I want to unprepare Invisibility Sphere, which is a third level illusion spell that like hides you and all your allies in like a sphere. Mm -hmm. I want to unprepare that and I want to replace it with Illusory Disguise heightened to third level, which will allow me to completely change my appearance, my scent, and my voice, and even allow me to like imitate an exact person. But in this case, I, I don't have an exact person to imitate, but I just want him to walk back, do this, like, you know, this preparation, and then cast illusory disguise and walk out as like a halfling, basically. Okay. Like, uh, not a rat folk and <laughs> completely different voice, completely different look. So he comes out and he's like, He's got like these, you know, well dressed and uh, kind of done up, but he's got like this, like, you know, seventies hair, like this long blonde hair that's like kind of in his face and a little scraggly, and uh, he, uh, you know, bright blue eyes, very attractive, and uh, and he just starts like walking through, you know, back through the party. Can I do all that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. That ten minutes passes. You're able to take on. Uh, the guise of a halfling, and when you walk out, um, you're immediately accosted by someone who walks by and looks at you and says, You! Why aren't you celebrating? Look oh. around you, everybody's eating and drinking, and you look like you can drive us home in a horse and carriage! <laughs> oh, I'm just, I'm behind on drinks. I had one and I lost my cup. Where can I get another? Can I get some wine? Where's the wine? <laughs> Please! And he just grabs, like, from a table a, uh, a full glass of wine that was sitting there, like most parties uh, yeah, in yeah. my house at the end of the night. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> drink this! Cheers! Uh, cheers! And, and, to the and wealthiest what sh- city in Manas on Earth! <laughs> wine goes all over your hands. and he- Right, and he, like, puts it up and just, like, dribbles it on his face and onto his clothes, but doesn't actually drink any of it, just kind of, like, splashes it on himself and, like, acts like he's inebriated. Uh... And it's just like, it's my first time at the palace. What? My first time. That's your first time yeah. at the palace? And you picked this year to come celebrate? Yeah. Oh, that's what? insane. Well, if you're going to pick a year to come, this is the year because we're celebrating the 1,000th year since the destruction of the city of Ib. It's a celebration that happens every year, but tonight... Tonight is the millennial celebration. This is why there's tens and thousands of people who have come to Sarna for a party that stretches all over the city. How did you get into the palace? If this is your first time, usually newcomers are are left out in the tents outside. Uh, To be honest with you, I think I've had a bit too much to drink. I don't really even remember. I was with some friends. They got me in, I think, but then I lost them. I was, uh... 
having a good time with the last back there in that little, uh, uh, you know, bad, you yeah. know. And I, I lost track of my friends, and so I'm just kind of alone now. Where, where are you headed? I'm, uh, I'm just looking for a good time. That's what I'm doing. I've had a little bit too much to drink, so now I'm going to have some more to eat, and then I'll have some more to drink and just rinse and repeat and see where I end up in the morning. Oh, well, well, I'll do the same. All right, high five. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh let's go back. Uh, and he walks away. Let me go and back he's to turning. Two. He's looking okay. around. I mean, like, I know it's... I, I'm going to roll a perception. I know it feels kind of like fruitless, but I'm going to do it. Okay. Because he's looking around and he's looking. Uh, that's a good roll. He's looking for uh, any indication of like an upstairs or an, 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 a cordoned off area or a, a forbidden area or anything like that. Uh, just uh, peering around. That is a 30, 30 perception. Okay. Uh, well, I was ready to cut to Suki, so I will say that you see Suki as you're looking around, and you two make eye contact with each other. Well, she doesn't know me. She doesn't know. Oh, that's right. So you see yeah. Suki. She doesn't <laughs> see you. Um, and you're looking around, and I mean, there's staircases going all the way up, and there are people just draped over them, either drunk or in the throes of passion. Uh, nothing seems to be off limits. Uh, the only area that doesn't seem to have much uh, egress is that staircase that's partially hidden behind screens. Um, uh, you've seen a couple of people come and go from there, but for the most part, it doesn't look like anything's really off limits here. Um, and then from what you've heard from this uh, guy that just high-fived you, uh, this party goes out of the palace and stretches through the entire city. Um, so it's it's a free-for-all. All right, well, he's gonna start making his way across to Suki once he recognizes her. And Suki is looking through him because she doesn't realize who it is at the <laughs> staircase with the screens because she's been like kind of looking around and taking everything in and it's in her mind like the way the dream world is she's like the things that seem out of place are usually like the mess up in the dream world the thing they didn't want you to see uh, that doesn't make sense so she's like it's so strange that there are these two main staircases and then there's this like other staircase you know that doesn't quite add up so she is starting to walk towards that, and she's basically going to walk right by you, Joe. Know? She's just like <laughs> moving through the crowd, like looking straight ahead, bumping into people, doesn't care. He's like, Suki. It's down. me. It's Atticus. She, lo she looks down. Oh. <laughs> this is, this is Dreamlands, Atticus. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, wait, if you look like that, what do I look like? No, you look the same. That's how I could recognize you. Oh. Why do you look different? I didn't want to stand out. I don't like being around these people in my... Suffice it to say, it's easier to pass through undetected if you look like them. Hmm. Understood. And she takes her hair and puts it in front of her elf ears. Uh, and she says, You see that staircase? Uh, let me lift you up. She raises him a little bit. Don't Sorry. Lift me. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> I can see it just fine. Sorry, you look like a child in this form. No offense. Oh, I'm fine. Are that you staircase. going up there? I don't. I don't know. It, it seems odd, out of place. It does. And I thought I would go have a peek. Would you like to come? It is beckoning us, isn't it? Let's go. Okay. Where's everyone else? Uh, I'll look around to see if I can see anyone as we go up a couple I'll steps. Do a, I'll do a perception Getting a little too. bit height, uh, a little bit of height. Uh, that is a terrible. I got a thirty-two, and I'm I got a taller. I'm taller than him. Oh. <laughs> okay. Suki, what do your elf eyes see? What do your elf eyes see? You, uh, you immediately see Xantar. Xantar, what are you doing? Uh, Xantar, uh, Xantar oh, I don't is, want to um, know. Gravy? <laughs> he is decided to go back is covered in, Xantar is covered in gravy. Oh my god. Um, and, uh, when the people made sexual passes at him, that just happened, and he's currently, like, pushing them off the table and swatting at them with his hands and going, ah, 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 ah. So that's very, uh, you can see that that's probably happening about 50 feet away from you. You see him standing on a table and there's two people like half naked covered in gravy giving him odd looks. We should, we should go grab him. Yes. 
<laughs> he All seems of my up- work to disguise us. He seems upset. So pointless. <laughs> he seems he seems very agitated, like a <laughs> caged like a caged rat. I'm gonna go help him. <laughs> As you are walking towards uh, Xantar and, and Aldo, you're still kind of wrapped up in that weird uh, conversation with uh, Yuna uh, and Ethel. Uh, I'm kind Ethel. of muttering. I'm just muttering to Werner, like in my neck. I'm, just, I'm having some unheard conversation with the hedgehog. And what are you doing, Ethel? Uh, at this point, Ethel is just like leaning up against the wall next to this, these two people who are having sex, and they're just <laughs> going at it. And he's just like, and then she said, she said, look, <laughs> you can't tell me, you can't tell me to fall back in love with you. And I was like, I know you're right. That's true. But at the same time, we have children together. So maybe we can try to work this out. Maybe we can go talk to somebody. That's it. You want to work on this? And they just are just kind of like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. While doing their while thing. While having yeah, sex. While <laughs> doing the deed. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> well, while you're all. Maybe he sees what he means. Like, all right, I got to go. Oh, I got to go. Yeah, have fun. Uh, have uh, go. You're busy. I'll, I'll you're leave busy. you. You're busy. I'll, I'll talk to somebody else. Sorry. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean to be such a downer. Ah. Okay. <laughs> you're you're all uh, kind of wrapped up in your own thing. Atticus and uh, Suki find each other. You see Xantar. You start walking in that direction. Aldo is talking to Werner. And Ethel, maybe you even uh, see uh, Xantar's antics as well above the din of everything else that's going on. But as all of that is happening, your conversations and, and the entire party is interrupted by shouts of terror that seem to be coming Ooh. from above, uh, on the balconies, on the staircases above. Um, and the music that you hear uh, stops and you see panicked, screaming people just like pushing and shoving each other down these fanciful staircases and along the balconies. In fact, uh, you see one body just oh, boom, fall onto a table and fucking turkey and gravy and food goes everywhere. Uh, and. Then, near that staircase that Atticus and Suki were walk, uh, walking towards, you see this small rivulet of water start to spill, like, into the hall. Uh, and people are now, like, running uh, out down that staircase and crowding into the already overcrowded uh, palace ballroom. And, uh, let me see here. Da, 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 da. Lost my notes. Oh yeah, uh, guys, just like running past, he's like the lake waters, the lake waters. They've risen to the top of the seawall, uh, threatening the entire city. And then all of a sudden, these like four creatures come into the room, and I mean, they they look like uh, kind of sickly green humanoid shaped figures with strange looking ears and like these big flabby lips, but they have an almost ghostly frame to them. Like you can see through them. Uh, however, it does look like they have frog like faces, yet only empty sockets stare uh, oh, from where their eyes should be. That is and they so just, scary. They yeah. just come floating <laughs> into the hall. And as they do so, they're just like mauling party goes with one strike, oh, just like, Vroom! and then somebody just like crumbles to the ground, crumbles to the ground, and they're just slaughtering people. Roll for initiative. Oh, oh my God. Okay. While you roll for initiative, I will take you to the map. Oh. Whoa, whoa, look at all the party goers. Oh uh, no. I'll do a little zoom in on what these ah. things look oh, like. Oh my God. So it's like a more uh, ghostly ah. version of that. Like this is more of a corporeal image, but imagine a more, uh, like you can almost see through it. Their, their bodies are transparent and just like black sockets where I should be. Uh, and uh, you know, this is a representation of, uh, of a scene here that is actually out of control. And you'll see you are placed throughout the hall here. There's Xantar way down the bottom talking with the gravy sex couple. There's Ethel watching a couple people bang. Uh, Atticus and Suki <laughs> are over here uh, heading in the direction of the staircase, which is uh, right behind those screens. And then Aldo, uh, you're up here uh, in the northern part of the ballroom. What you couldn't see if this was a full map is like it would be uh, 20, 30 times the size of this. Um, but you guys were all right here. Xantar, what did you get? I got a 14. 14, okay. Uh, I wrote Sarah, but Suki? Either's fine. Uh, <laughs> I got a nat 20 for a 37. Ooh, Whoa, 37. 
somebody's seven. going first. Atticus. Atticus got a 28. 28. Okay. Aldo? Uh, I also got a net 20 for a 31. Oh. Yo. Oh. Uh, Holy smokes. Uh, Ethel. Bonzonis. Ethel got a natural 19 for a 36. Jeepers. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. So now this map is at best a representation of what's going on here, at least with the pawns that I put on here. Because there are so many people, and imagine several now dead bodies around the feet of these creatures, every square is difficult to ram. Because uh, you're like climbing, over, pushing past people, climbing over bodies on the ground as they just maul their way into the room. And again, this little rivulet of water uh, coming out. And you realize now that this must be, uh, this giant wall that was unadorned must be some sort of seawall. Um, but, you know, that's why it's so tall is to protect uh, the, the waters from coming over. And the fact that there's water coming in is very disturbing. But you have bigger fish to fry. And I believe uh, we're going to kick things off with Suki. Suki. Um, so I have um, wild empathy. Can I do a free action and say, like, I'm using my wild empathy to talk with the creature? Like, in a way, not talk, but like get a vibe. Like, are these creatures going to attack us? What, Like, what's the vibe? They're killing They're everyone. slaughtering everyone. They're the slaughtering right. everyone. You know, they I'm going to give this to you as a free act. <laughs> <Right. laughs> yes. <laughs> What's the vibe? Are they going to kill the me? Sense you know what? It, you, you actually get the sense that they're going to kill everyone but you. Oh. That they're, in fact, going to make you their queen. <laughs> All right. And you should side with them. I'm new to oh, playing yeah. a druid. I'm like, should I kill the animals? They're animals. They're, they're not animals. Are they, are they humanoid? They're not are animals. Are they humanoid? What are they? They're not oh, animals. They're not an animal. They're, they're incorporeal. Monsters. Yeah. Oh. They're ghosts, basically. They're horrible ghost frogs. Okay, she's asking the group. She goes, <laughs> oh, horrible ghost frogs. Okay, got it. Yeah. Just making sure. Um, she goes, dreams are crazy. Uh, and then she... <laughs> they sure are. <laughs> they sure are. Dreams are crazy, man. She slaps her dreams hands together. And she's going to cast electric arc at the first two creatures... Uh, that are closest to her, 25 feet in front of her. So she the goes, two guests directly in front of you? No. <laughs> she, <laughs> what do we do? She says to Atticus, she says to Atticus, excuse me, I, pardon me. And she scoots him a little bit and then slaps her hands together and casts electric arc. And you have to make a 25 basic reflex. Okay, Ooh. a little basic reflex. Uh, the first one uh, fails with a 20 and the second one uh, fails with a 16. So not nice. a critical fail. Amazing. Uh, but two nope. failures. Nope. Okay, so failure, you take full damage. So that's gonna be... Four. That's gonna be th uh, 16. 16 uh, electric damage. Okay, so you fire off this electric arc. It z z z jumps to the other one, and does it hurt them? Yes. Does all that damage go through? It doesn't appear to. Um, like I said, you can see right through them. So you were able to damage them, but they are still pressing onward. And right as you hit them, they like lash out and rip at the face of this poor uh, woman uh, who was standing right there. And her face just like is torn off of her body and she crumbles to the ground. Just like, oh, uh, oh, uh, shaking. Oh. Any actions left? Uh, she's going to, mm, that was two actions. She could move. Now nah, she doesn't really want to move any closer to them. She's going to stay where she is. You want to go talk to them and see what their plans are? No, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Forget it. Uh, all right, yeah, with the difficult terrain, uh, you would be very limited in how far you can go. Um, but let's see what old Ethel Merman, let's see if you hired the right dude for the job. Ethel, you're a little far away from the action here, surrounded by sexy people. It's true. Can I have control of my pawn on roll 20? I'll allow it. Um, so <laughs> Ethel is going to have to double move because of the difficult terrain to get to the uh, amphibious fellow, uh, the southwestern amphibious, amphibious fellow. Um, but when So he's going to double move up there, and uh, in the process he will reach down into seemingly nothingness, and he will draw out uh, his warhammer and his hatchet. Uh, and then, uh, uh -huh. you should be able to control him now. Great. Yep. Uh, and then he gets there and he will take a swing with the war hammer. Okay. 
Uh, that is natural one. Oh, oh Matthew. No. I mean, I think you're months long. Ice That's your street. start. Yeah. That is your start will, in the campaign. I've been hot all episode. I've been rolling 18, like 17, 18, 19, and then natural one on the first. Nat one. Uh, that is going to be a, a, a fan fumble, which is universally beloved by the fan base. Um, which is <laughs> Which is why we continue to use them. Um, so, Matthew. There's no, no confirmation, right? In an hour or two, we. No, no, no. We're, we make up this as we go along. What, uh, you want to pick a, uh, a city that will also not anger anyone? Uh, yeah, let's go with uh, Frankfurt AM. Frankfurt AM? Yes. Okay. There's two Frankfurts in Germany. There's an AO. I see. I thought you were giving us the time. Frankfurt I just want to let you guys know, whenever you pick any other country, it's just Sweden. That, that's where <laughs> yeah, that's where the fumble right. comes from. Yep. Possibly the UK if you pick anything closer to the UK <laughs> yeah. than Sweden. Sweden and the UK are getting badly overrepresented by our fumbles. <laughs> yeah. We're well, let's see Sweden. what let's see what happens. I tried I try to throw a bone to our German listeners, but oh, you got pretty close. Uh, all right, this one is from Christian in Denmark. Hi, Christian. There you go. Okay. All right. Okay. All Christian right. in Denmark. A Dane. <laughs> um, <laughs> a Dane. A veritable it's called, Dane. I implore you to reconsider. As your attack whizzes past your target, you attempt to calmly say, I implore you to reconsider, to dissuade your target from attacking. Your demeanor, however, is panicked and frankly a bit overacted. Your target clearly senses a weakness in you and does not even reconsider. Your target gains two extra actions on their next turn if they attack you. If your charisma is at least 14, reduce it to one extra action. Believe it or not, Ethel Merman's charisma is only a 12. Oh, <laughs> no. oh, so dude. So it gets two more actions? Two oh, extra five actions, actions next if round. they attack you. Hmm. I wonder. <laughs> I wonder what Troy is going to do. <laughs> well, that fan well. fumble is OP. Nerf that fan fumble in 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. Thank you, Christian, you wacky Thanks. Dane. Christian. <laughs> you wacky Dane. Um, Dane you. All right. I'll, uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll remember that. Um, in the meantime, it is Aldo's turn. Aldo, are you, sh- you shooken out of this or shaken out of this? Yeah, I, I I hope this Shooter. is right because I I, I I put the petrified condition on my hero lab sheet and it I can't get rid of it because it showed up. Petrified character shows up as an item in your in your inventory, <laughs> and so it's so I'm overburdened like wildly and I cannot get rid of this thing. So I'm <laughs> flying by the seat of my pants. Okay, uh, first I'm Come gonna on, do. Come on, Demi Plane. Uh, yeah, uh, hurry, we need you. Uh, so. <laughs> I would love to do a lore check to see if I can identify something about these creatures. Okay, now we're talking. Uh, yeah, give me a lore. Maybe religion, history. Uh, I'll do a history. Okay, I'll do a history. Uh, that's a thirty. Okay, these seem to be shades of the original inhabitants of Ib. These amphibian-like mm. creatures that were just worshiping the great old one, Bokrog. But the shade, the, the, these ghostly forms have returned, perhaps to enact vengeance while celebrating the destruction of their city. Uh, as Atticus found out that that's what this is. It's the 1,000th year since that shit town was destroyed by Sarnath. <laughs> yeah, fuck them! Well, now they're back, it seems. I uh, can't tell you how perfect this setting would have been for Sir Julie. Yeah. She would have Between the Bacchanal here. and the and the ghost and the ghostly enemies. It's a you know, perfect confluence of all of her interests. Yes. Also would have been great for a cleric. <laughs> An unnamed well, cleric. Yeah, no, the cleric was bad. We all can agree. We all hated that cleric, so it's good that she's gone. Dead. She was great, whatever her name was. Yeah. But in the meantime, something important you need to know. Uh, they have resistance to all damage. Five. And uh, except, uh, you know, ghost touch, force, positive energy would break through that. However, any non-magical source, it's uh, resist uh, 10. Oh, so if you just like wow. go to stab it with a non-magical weapon, it's a uh, DR 10. Okay. Uh, so Aldo is going to move to a seldom used pouch on his bandolier, and he's going to pull out this little spring-loaded 
canister. And he he shouts out, the ghosts act accordingly, and tosses this thing at the closest ghost to him. Okay. Uh, oh my god. Okay, that is a 34 to hit. Oh, nice. Uh, 34 is a critical. Yes! Oh, okay. Amazing. Yes. Okay, where it's not a natural 20, we won't do a fan crit, but that will be okay. double damage. Okay. So I hit this thing with a, a ghost charge. Oh, nice. So that does ghost touch. It basically uh, is the effect of ghost touch. It just does positive touch. damage. Oh, positive, positive damage. damage. Okay, great. Yeah, it's just like, it's this like a uh, mixture of chemicals and salts, and it's like, the, yeah, it's like salt on a slug. Perfect. So that is 12 points of damage. 12 points of damage. All right, so that all goes Positive through. All goes through. Um, and then what about the people around him? They, they, they take splash damage? They don't, no. Because uh, okay, I have the uh, ability where it's like I can exclude people around. Him. And they're just like, ah! as they're holding yeah. their clothes together. Yeah. Um, do you have any actions left? It was drawing the second action. Uh, no, I have one, one more action. Okay. And I'm going to throw another ghost charge. Bump, 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 bump. Uh, that's an 18. 18 is a miss, but not a okay. fumble. They will take one point of positive splash damage. Ah! It is now Atticus's turn. Atticus, you are a halfling. <laughs> yes, I am. I don't... From what, our, from what we were studying, I mean, these things, they hold the idol? Like, um, it was their people's idol? They yes. worshipped the god of the idol we're looking for? From your, as you were reading through Lyle's uh, notes, you found that long ago there was a city uh, known as Ib, the civilization, and they had this idol that they would use to worship uh, Bokrug, who they think uh, lived in this lake. But then the city of Sarnath came over and just destroyed them, took the idol, put it in their temple like as a war trophy, and, the t and shortly thereafter the idol disappeared. This is all right out of Lovecraft, too. This is all from, like, one of his really early short stories. All yeah. this stuff. It's awesome if you're into yeah. that. It's pretty cool. Uh, so, I mean, I'm just wondering if there's any... Whatever. It, like, why don't we just kill these people with them? I'd be like, yeah, man, fuck these guys. Let, let's go get that idol. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around why these guys are the enemy. I asked Troy that, and you all made fun of me. And Troy said, they're killing everyone. And I said, okay. Well, we thought you were talking well, about Why don't you try thing. to parley with them? Maybe they won't parley, but you could try. I mean, you, <laughs> Sid, to be fair, your question was, are they trying to hurt me? <laughs> that, that's a very <laughs> different question than from what I'm asking. I know they're trying to hurt me. Um, but yeah, I don't know. <sighs> Parlaying with them. Again, these like are like, there is there are no eyes there. They just seem to be like. Yeah. Uh, okay, Raisins. and that, he'll just try to, to do damage. You're not so, wrong, though. Like, these people are the, the Sarnath people are the assholes. Right, exactly. So, all right, well, I'm not going to... They don't seem, yeah, particularly intelligent. They seem like soldiers. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, try to... I'll try to hit them. So uh, okay. Atticus is going to uh, pull a... Uh, like a whole tray of food and all of the many knives that it holds tele telekinetically and just try to like slam it into them with a telekinetic projectile. Okay, uh, which so one? The one just... that Aldo and uh, Suki hit? Yeah, same okay. one that Aldo and Suki hit and oh. he just, and you just see all this like, this flatware starts flying through the air. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Natty 17. That's a 32. What were you going to say, Skid? Doc Robotnik reminds me that the, it is also enfeebled one as a result of the ghost charge. Ah. ah. Oh. Nice. That is Remind me about difference. enfeebled while I look it up. Uh, well, enfeebled means that they're been feebled. Made, <laughs> so it's made a, more feeble. A minus one to uh, melee-based attack rolls, damage rolls, and athletics checks. Okay. Uh, great. Um... All right, so they are enfeebled one, and then you are doing this. Now, even though it's telekinetic, it's not force damage, right? Because you're actually shooting a projectile at it, right? Uh, yes, yeah, it's it's bludgeoning, bludgeoning damage. Okay. Um, oh, wait, so the bludgeoning... What 
It comes from but a you spell. did roll a critical. A third to two is a critical, so it's going to be double damage, but it's going to take uh, it's going to take DR less. ten, yeah, because it's non magical. Okay, so even though doubled, the source is magical, doubled its thirty six, so it would be twenty six points of damage. Okay, wow. and that is enough to kill uh, yes. that oh, first all right. wow. Ib shade, and it's just like ah, and disappears. Does that happen? Uh, was that the one that was uh, going to get two actions against me? Unfortunately, no. That is the one uh, he right next to you. Ethel asks. Um, and I'm excited for him to go. Uh, but let's see. One of them is dead. That was number uh, two. And now it is their turn. Um, uh, it is my turn still. Oh, and I am me. going to. That's okay. I'm just going to cast uh, shield uh, and put up a, 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 an arcane force shield in front of myself. Okay. And does that stack with mage armor that you cast earlier? Yeah. It's a okay. shield bonus, uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, uh, Mage Arbor's an item bonus. Got you. I'm asking just to be pedantic so we learn together. <laughs> yeah, I know that Mage Armor is an item bonus, It's a and shield is a circumstance bonus. Okay. Um, all right, this one uh, standing right uh, at the uh, entrance to the, or like right where the, the, the screens part leading to the staircase, um, will uh, double move in the direction of Aldo and take one, because every square is uh, difficult terrain. And can they fly? Oh yeah, no, they fly. So it's oh. a single move. Yeah, they're just like, they, their feet don't really exist. They just float across the floor. Oh. Um, and it will attack you with its racking touch. Uh, -oh. uh ooh, 19 to hit. Uh that is that is a miss. That is a miss. Okay. Yeah. Um all right, I am going to uh try again with my second attack and I missed with the second attack. Uh, okay. Okay. The one uh that uh is closest to Atticus will float over in the direction of Atticus and uh also attack twice. First attack is oh Garbage roll with neon green. 17. Miss, right? M miss. Okay, need a high roll here. And a nat two on the second roll. Yeah, yes. <laughs> God. I'm excited about these guys, too. It's the luckily, arcane shield. Luckily, I have five actions now against Ethel Merpin. <laughs> oh, poor <laughs> Ethel. It's going to get rocked. But, I mean, your AC's got to be rock solid. I could have ten actions that, you know, the, the lowered penalty, the, the multi-attack penalty oh, is going to yeah. get me. Um... But I never thought I'd it. say it, but th I'm thankful for the MAP. <laughs> Here we go. First attack. Okay. Uh, 29 to hit. Yeah, that hits. A couple things are going to happen. Uh, first, I'm going to roll some damage. Uh, only nine points of damage. Uh -huh. However, you are now doomed one. <gasps> Oh, we've never seen this, for right? For one minute. Doomed. No, you have not seen the doomed condition. Uh, a powerful force has gripped your soul, calling you closer to death. Doom always includes a value. The dying value at which you die is reduced by your doomed value. Okay. If your maximum dying value is reduced to zero, you instantly die. When you oh die, my God. you're no longer doomed. <laughs> so now you what? die cool. and die. No longer doomed. <laughs> Uh, your doomed value decreases by one each time you get a full night's rest, but should you survive this Dreamlands encounter, it doesn't carry over to the material plane anyway. However, do you have Die Hard? Yes, I do. All right, so instead of dying at dying four now, you die at dying three. No, uh, no. They, dying instead of dying four, at dying five, five, I die at dying oh, Excuse me, die five, you die at dying four. However, if they keep hitting you and keep stacking these dooms, they could just straight up I, I just want to keep saying this. Instead of dying at dying five, you're dying at dying four. <laughs> a lot of dying. Is that a dying a dying? All right, second attack. Uh, probably going to be hard to hit, but I'm going to try it anyways. Nah, 19 to hit. Yes. Okay. Uh, and then, I mean, I have these attacks, so I'm going to try it because uh, it's fun. I missed on that third one. And then on my remaining actions, I am going to... I imagine you have an attack of opportunity. But that's all right. I am going to uh, attempt to fly away. Do you have an attack of opportunity? In fact, I do. Oh, oh nice. you son of a bitch. Nice. So what you got. With the Warhammer. Okay, there we go. 33 to hit. There we that go. is a critical. Is it a magical yes. Warhammer? It is a magical Warhammer. Oh. Well, shit sticks. <laughs> okay, so that is going to be... 
32 points of damage. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. very good. Very good 32 points of damage. Okay. Uh, so you almost immediately kill it. Um, and then it just kind of slowly floats away right next to Suki. Uh, with its remaining two actions. And now, finally, it is Xantar, King of the Zoog's turn. <laughs> Okay, they've all moved. Excuse me, they've all moved pretty far away from me. The the difficult terrain is due to water, not uh, no. Stone difficult or? terrain is just the throng of people and some dead, some alive. Let me ask you this. Hello, uh, I've got twenty foot of movement. Will that get me to one of them? It'll get me to one of them if there wasn't difficult terrain. Is it possible that Xantar can leap from table to table <laughs> on their heads? Like the feral creature he is, what kind using of a, a, a acrobatics role. What and kind get of over GM there. would I be if I said no? Uh, of course, uh, okay. you uh, already said you were on the table. Um, right. So I believe it's going to be an athletics role, and you're go trying athletics. Yeah, uh, that's yeah, fine. Let's, yeah, let's do athletics, and you're trying to get how many feet? I'm trying to get 20 full feet. If I get 20 full feet, I, I make it over to one of them. All right, DC All right. 20 then, I'm gonna say. Yeah. DC 20 uh, athletics to try and make that leap from table to table. Okay, here we go. Uh, Does that seem right? Is that working? That's fun. Okay, I just mean the, 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 the distance. The oh distance yeah. Seem right. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine with that. All right, where are my... It's 20 as the crow flies. Here we go. He's rolling his athletics. Bang. Oh, oh, crushed it. Yeah, uh, that is a 36. <laughs> right, dude. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. Uh, you're able to. Right there. Uh, and uh, yeah, and now he, uh, well, he's got a rage. So he rages. <laughs> and then he swings his great club. Okay. All right, swinging that great club. We're swinging that great club. What? I love this. All is one action. Club. You're like, Raging in midair and then coming down on this dude's yeah, head. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I literally my feet landed on like two people's heads <laughs> before I leaped forward screaming. Uh, and then here comes the great club, and that Ooh. damage is going to be uh, that's going to be uh, seven bludgeoning damage. Wait, what was the to hit? Twenty-seven to hit. Twenty-seven to hit. Okay, so not a crit. Seven bludgeoning, and you don't have a magical club. Uh, it is, sorry, it is a uh, plus one great club of striking. Okay, sadly, that will only be two points of damage, but if ah! it wasn't magical, ah. it would have been zero points. So, yeah. uh, full of uh, full of sound and fury, but unfortunately only two points of damage. Um, and I love raging... that I roared at him, I came down with a giant club and I just sort of skimmed his nose slightly. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you did land on top of two, uh, people. Um, At least so I have... hurt innocent people. Right. <laughs> um, that's okay. all my actions. All right. And I got to mark the guy that is attacking Aldo is enfeebled. So I just got to keep that in mind. All right. That's the end of round one. And now it goes to Suki's turn again. Suki, you are now, uh, you got one of these guys right on top of you. Yeah. She turns around and he had floated right up so silently. Um, and you see her hair like rush in front of her face. Oh, and then it rushes behind her and blows back as she puts her hands out. And she's just casting Disrupt Undead, but it's a cool spell. Oh, and it cool. works in this situation. So okay. make a uh, DC 25 Fortitude save. DC 25 Fortitude save. Assuming that they're undead, I rolled a 26. Oh, now, it. if it's basic, that's still gonna be half damage. Yeah. Well, it would have been cool if I got all my damage. And then it's half damage minus another five. Or is that well, positive damage? What kind of damage? It's positive oh, energy. Oh, perfect. It's positive energy. Ooh, and I rolled not terribly. 12, 13, 14, uh, 17. And that That's one ah, dies as well. Nice. Amazing. Yes. Yes. Nice. Uh, and it's kind of sad. The way in which they die, it doesn't seem like they're reacting to your attack. It seems like they're reacting to a memory of another death oh. as they oh, like ah, phase out of existence. Perhaps that is incredibly own. perceptive of us to pick up on. Suki, yeah. felt, Suki felt that. She Just felt that. a little flavor I like. They are reacting it. to another death. I appreciate <laughs> it. I don't think we get enough flavor on these things. I, I'd like a peek behind the 
what, a little, all I'm the gonna, cool shit the GM gets to know. Can yeah. I do the most annoying thing ever, Troy? Remember my turn earlier? <laughs> yes, I do. It was so long ago. Uh, everybody, think back. Uh, my raging would have given me two extra points of damage, and I ah. saw some people online saying, "Doesn't he get more damage for his rage?" But I looked it up carefully, and I only get two extra points. Well, the good thing is people <laughs> online are infallible, so I'll yeah, take yeah. another two points. I just want you to know, range. people online, I'm listening. That's what we I'm do learning. Again. I'm listening. listening and learning, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like Matthew's former Alexa. I'm listening. <laughs> yeah, and learning. And learning. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, ba -ba 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 -ba. so two down, two left, but uh, so many of these uh, fornicators and gluttonous fools are also dead, but fuck them. Um, it is uh, still Suki's turn. Suki, do you have one more action? Was that a, a two action or a three action? That was, uh, I think that was a- undead. Two, that is a two, I, damn, all my spells are two actions. Um, that was we'll two actions. She's gonna stay where she is. Okay. Um, yeah, you don't know if these guys have some sort of reaction. Um, why risk it? Uh, you haven't taken any damage yet. It is Ethel Merman's turn. Ethel, uh, you messed that guy up as he slid away. What do you yeah, do but now? now he's dead, right? Is that the one that Suki killed? Yes. Okay. All right, so Ethel is going to, there's not much else he can do. He's just gonna charge at the frog, uh, frog dude to the south. Okay, and this frog is going after this halfling who seems to really be hanging. You're surprised at this random uh, party going halfling that yeah. seems to be holding his own. The stout halfling. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> Ethel's gonna have to double move once more because of the difficult terrain thing, and then he will take a strike with the Warhammer. Uh, Natty 19, that's a 37. Yo, Ooh. that's another crit, my friend. Nice. Oh, 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 amazing. Nice. Double so damage much minus five. Uh, damage. 34 points of damage. Yes, Whoa. I love this guy. I love Ethel Merman. Yeah, he's imagine, he just has a hatchet in one hand and a Warhammer in the other, and he's just like, and just like he's like fools. he's like this hulking guy, like muscles rippling. He just starts like charging like a football player straight at this ghost, and just like takes a giant swipe with a warmer. Yes, <laughs> yes, we were, we were talking awesome. about Henry Cavill and the uh, <laughs> Yet again, not reacting to your blows as it perishes. It almost seems like it's being struck from all sides as it screams and disappears. There is one enemy left. Uh, two actions to move up, one to strike. Yep. Okay. Um, let's keep things moving here with Aldo. Perfect, this one is enfeebled one. Uh, can you take it out before it f feebly tries to kill you? Okay, so he's sort of fumbling for another pocket in his bandolier as he pulls out this sort of clear glass bottle and he, he shakes it and it starts glowing with this yellow light and he smashes it against this thing's face. Okay. Awesome. So it's just... Uh, that is a 26 to hit. That is a hit. Okay. <laughs> that is... Ooh. Uh, okay. That is nine points of positive damage. Okay, that all goes through. Oh, wait, no. Ten points of positive damage. No, 11 points of positive damage. Final answer. Uh... <laughs> No, 10, sorry, 10 points of positive damage. <laughs> <laughs> 10 points of positive damage okay. and um, seven points of fire damage. Seven points of fire damage, okay. Um, great. Now that's interesting, I wonder, uh, I'm not gonna uh, slow things down, but I'm curious for myself, where those things come separately does the resistance go twice, or is it just one combined mega damage and you only take the resistance once? Well, That's there should be any resistance to the positive damage. Right, the positive all goes through, so then this would take five off of it, yeah. I'm just right. curious when the damage comes from two sources, something to think well, about. Well, it's not, it's next. one source that does like two different kinds of damage. So. I see, okay, all right, so all the positive gets through, and then you said how much fire? Uh, seven? Uh, seven, seven. Okay, great, yeah. so we'll say two of that gets through. Um, Right, and that was only one action, right? Uh, that was actually, I believe it's two. This is bottled sunlight. So I, I pulled it up. I think it's one action to activate it and one to throw it. I so I'm gonna you. use my last action to throw another ghost uh, ghost charge. Okay. So uh, uh, I love this. Aldo's just ripping these things out, tossing them. 23. 
23 is a hit. Uh, that is, uh, six points of positive damage. Six more points of positive damage. Six points of positive damage. And it, too, perishes. Boom. Oh, baby! Boom. Oh, there God, that was... Oh, man, we tr trounced these things. Trounced these things. Couple very important things. Number one, a week from Saturday, we are at the Bell House in Brooklyn. Tickets are still available. This is our homecoming show. New York always sells weird, like people buy tickets at the last minute. We need people to come out. Uh, we're having, uh, Sydney is, is away before she booked the tour with us. Uh, she's away and uh, we didn't ask Jared because he lives too far away yeah. because we wanted Kate Stamis to yeah. be in the house. Kate, Kate Stamis, Stamis is joining us. Who the hell is she gonna play? You watch it right now, Kate? I told her to watch so she could catch up on what's happening. Kate is gonna be there, please come out. It is always a great night. Bars stay open till four. It's a great time. Please come out to the Bell House. That's number one. Number two, as these things perish and, and go down, like the crowd is now just ah, 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 running down and you hear people uh, yelling about the, the lake waters, how they've, they've, risen, they've risen to the top of the seawall and they're coming over and threatening the entire city. And then the guy's like, and there's more of these forms. There's more of these forms climbing over the wall as well. And the other guy's like, yes, and one of them, one of them is holding aloft an ominous green lizard statue. <gasps> yes. The city is doomed. We'll all be washed away. And as this is saying, like the crowd is pushing you all back and they're all running away from the staircase. In fact, you notice that uh, Suki and Xantar get like pulled back with the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Oh, <laughs> just Are you fell. okay? Sorry. He he fell fell off his is that chair. a bit? I will see you right? in New York. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> see you in New York. <laughs> Let's see in New York. That was a money end, Nickel Valley. That was amazing. I don't know where my headphones are. <laughs> we can say anything about it. What happened, OJ? Son of a bitch. <laughs>